The opinions and views expressed in the following program are those of the speakers and the host and do not necessarily reflect those of Yokely Scott Corporation and your sports network. Yeah, I've been closer to Jesus before. So can you help me out? Can you help me out? Am I on my own? Am I on my own? Or can you help me out? Am I on my own? Am I on my own? Or can you help me out? Welcome into a Tuesday edition of Running Point presented by Greenwood Chevrolet on Mahoning Avenue in Austintown. If you're in the market for a brand new or slightly used automobile, you owe it to yourself. Hell, you owe it to your wallet to check out the good folks at Greenwood Chevrolet on Mahoning Avenue in Austintown. Make a deal with you. Please make a deal with me, I should say. Before you put pen to paper... And sign your life away, I don't know, the last six or seven years of your life away. Do yourself a favor and give Greenwood Chevrolet on Mahoning Avenue in Austintown an opportunity to earn your business. You will not be sorry in any way, shape, or form. Been saying this for months. There's three great qualities that a car dealership must have. First and foremost, you got to have a sales department and a sales department that you can trust, a sales department that is not going to sell you a damn lemon. And that's exactly what Greenwood Chevrolet has. They have salespeople that will not sell you bad automobiles. Number two, you have to have a finance department. And courtesy of Tracy Bryden, 1979, Letonia grad, don't you know? Uh, Tracy will get you in the car in the very smallest interest rates humanly possible. She will work her tail off to do that for you. And number three, I mean, obviously, your tires are going to be worn. you gotta, you got to rotate the tires. you got to change the oil. If you happen to back into something or far worse, and you need the service department to uh, fix some bumps and, and some dents and all that, all that. Other good stuff that comes with driving. Uh, the service department is A number one. Uh, add it all up. It is a tremendous car dealership and a dealership that you need to see before you put pen to paper. Greenwood Chevrolet on Mahoning Avenue in Austin Town. Got a, a really nice show lined up for today. Rob Schmidt, the voice of the YSU basketball penguins, will be calling in in about 10 minutes or so. Garrett Covington is the latest senior to say, I'm staying in Youngstown. And uh, the Penguins uh, put pen to paper on a number of kids transferring in to Youngstown State University. The portal has been used quite well uh, for the YSU men. We will uh, catch up with Rob Schmidt and uh, let everyone in on those details. Uh, Coming up at 2 o'clock today, we will hear from YSU baseball coach, the manager, Dan Bertolini. Penguins, uh, they split a series with Milwaukee. Uh, They remain one game behind Milwaukee for second place in the Horizon League. Uh, They get a test this week. They get a serious test this week because the team that is one game in back of them in third place in the Horizon League, actually in fourth place, uh, the, the Penguins are in third Northern Kentucky is a game behind uh, YSU for third place. So Northern Kentucky is sitting in fourth place, and they are going to be hosting the Penguins in a four-game series this weekend. It's a huge weekend. Penguins are definitely going to need to at least split, hopefully, take three out of four. Well, let's be honest, hopefully sweep the damn series and put some distance between they and the Northern Kentucky Norse. Uh, so we will hear from 
uh, Dan Bertolini at 2 o'clock. Coming up at 2.30, the brand new head basketball coach at Poland. Now, it's not official for another couple of weeks. Uh, he will be... Uh, he will be presented to the Board of Education on April the 26th. Uh, and apparently, every se- everything seems to be in order. The I's are dotted, the T's are crossed, and we don't expect the school board to go on uh, on Coach Fender. Eric Fender uh, is going to be the new uh, boys basketball coach at Poland. And Coach Fender is going to call in on the show at 2.30. This is a good hire. It's a really, really good hire for the uh, Poland Bulldogs. Eric Fender, the longtime assistant to Ken Grisdale, and uh, Coach Fender will do a really nice job uh, continuing the tradition of excellence that is uh, the Poland Bulldogs. So Coach Fender will be calling in at 2.30, and we'll have some fun with the brand-new head basketball coach of the Poland Bulldogs, um, Coach Fender. He'll be calling in at 2.30. All right, last night, uh, the Indians uh, lose to the Chicago White Sox on a very bizarre play in which uh, Yu Chang, uh, the Indians' first baseman, uh, the White Sox had runners at first and second, one out, bottom of the ninth inning, score tied at three. And a ground ball hit to Yu Chang, and Chang wanted to go to second base to get the force there and perhaps uh, get the return throw back to first base for an inning-ending double play. Unfortunately, uh, and, and Yu Chang is, is very inexperienced at first base. Uh, this is his first year playing at first base. Yu Chang threw the ball, and it went off of the White Sox player's helmet, ricocheted off his helmet, and went into left field, and that enabled the runner at second base to come around and score the winning run. White Sox beat the Indians in really weird fashion uh, last night by the final score of 4-3. to three. What happened after the game through the night and into uh, early this morning sickens me beyond belief. On social media, gee, what a friggin' surprise, uh, Yu Chang was pretty much abused and called some pretty racist things. Um, Chang was, uh, yeah, he was he was called some pretty, pretty ugly names. And Yu Chang this morning decided to turn the tables on these idiots and basically show all the insults that came to him, and. You know, I've been saying this for years. Twitter is a is a great thing, and it can also be used to do something incredibly stupid and ignorant and unfortunately hateful. And this was a great example last night. Um, I, I just I don't understand why anyone would pick apart someone based on the color of their skin or their nationality. Uh, But Yu Chang was, boy, he was called some pretty pretty foul and disgusting things last night. And good for you uh, when he turned the tables on him and actually reposted every horrible insult that he had. Um, it, it, It bothers me that people are using this platform, which should be used for really good things. You know, Facebook and and uh and Twitter, you could you could use this stuff to uh catch up with with family and friends that aren't living in in the state that you're in or in the area that you're in, and it's a it's a great tool to to you know, keep in touch with all of the people that uh live so far away from you. Unfortunately, it's also a tool for the racists to uh, to do some pretty ignorant things, and you know, yesterday it was uh, it was just ugly to see what uh, the amount of abuse that Yu Chang took, all because uh, he made a mistake on the field, and, and the mistake cost the Indians one game in a 162 game season. Uh, what six tenths of one percent? Yeah, congratulations, all you sick idiots out there that that think that. You're a better human being now because you've 
uh, gone after a player that made a mistake. And, and not just that, uh, said some pretty disgusting things. Keyboard warrior garbage at its absolute best. Because Lord knows none of you, uh, none of you assholes would do that to someone's face because you're a coward piece of shit. Anyone that does that is a coward piece of shit. It's just disgusting. Absolutely disgusting. And I'm so glad Yu Chang uh, decided that he would turn the tables on these ignorant people. And uh, kudos to him. Uh, Kudos to him for that indeed. All right, so the Indians lost last night. Pirates lost to the Padres last night, 6-2. to two. I had an opportunity to talk with a uh, uh, a guy that I consider a friend. He was the manager of the West 10 Diamond Jacks when I was there, uh, 2003, 4, and 5. Uh, so he and, I have, uh, he and I have known each other for a better part of 20 years, and he's a, a lifer, a baseball lifer. Uh, he was in the Yankee organization as a player, uh, he has grinded and found his way into Major League Baseball. Uh, he started Major League Baseball with the Baltimore Orioles. He is now the San Diego Padres bench coach. And uh, Bobby Dickerson is uh, is with the Padres. And, and uh, he and I uh, had a conversation this morning and uh, just having a good time. And, and he, you know, he stressed to me, he said, look, 10 games into the season, there's you know, a lot of people are putting the cart before the horse. This is, um, you know, this this is a team that's talented, but we don't know how good this team is. And that is exactly what Bobby told me today. And uh, I have the Padres winning the World Series. I think that this team is uh, is really, really talented. And it's going to be a dogfight between they and the Dodgers. But uh, last night, Padres defeated the Pir- Pirates 6-2. Uh, to two. You Darvish went seven strong innings. One run, three hits. Uh, he gets the victory. Uh, the Pirates, uh, who had a pretty nice weekend against Chicago, uh, they fall to three and seven on the campaign. So the uh, Buccos are uh, three and seven on the campaign. Indians are now five and four after the loss. They're in a uh, flat foot tie with Minnesota. Kansas City is percentage points ahead of the Indians. They've only played seven games this year. Uh, but a long, long, long way to go. Uh, obviously, it, uh, nothing is is going to be won uh, this month. Uh, you can move yourself out of contention with a with a terrible uh, April, but you can't win the division in April. You could certainly lose it in in April with a with a with a god awful month, uh, but you cannot. Um, you cannot win the division uh, in April, but the Padres uh, posting a victory last night. This is their one and only appearance uh, in Pittsburgh this year. Uh, they are going to be playing interleague games with the American League West this year. Uh, I, I really hate the fact that we're still doing interleague baseball because normally uh, teams make two trips into uh, into the National League cities. Unfortunately, with interleague play. Uh, if a West Coast team is coming into Cleveland or Pittsburgh, it's their only appearance for the campaign, which uh, which kind of sucks. Uh, so if you wanted to go see San Diego play, uh, I think you have tomorrow, Wednesday, and maybe Thursday. I, I want to say they are playing on uh, on Thursday. I'm gonna have to. Uh, I'm going to have to take a gander, but I believe uh, Pirates and the uh, uh, and the uh, Padres do play on Thursday, and they do. It's an afternoon affair, twelve uh, thirty-five affair. Uh, it'll be um, it'll be a getaway day for the uh, for the Padres. Uh, so tonight, tomorrow, and Thursday, the last three opportunities uh, to see the Padres this year in Pittsburgh. All right, so there you go. All right, 330-886-0813. The MP Vivo Heating and Air Conditioning Hotline open for business. We're with you till 3 o'clock. Rob Schmidt will be calling in uh, very shortly. Uh, great, great news for the Penguins in that Garrett Covington has decided that he is going to stick around. Uh, Covington's a two-time all-defensive uh, league player. 
Uh, he has over 1,100 career points, closing in on 500 career rebounds. He also has 130 assists and 118 steals in a very nice career at Youngstown State University as Garrett Covington has announced that he is going to return to YSU. He and Michael Akuche uh, are the two returning seniors. Still no word on Nas Bohannon. Hopefully, fingers crossed, with um, Covington and Akuche coming back, hopefully uh, this means that Nia, uh, that um, uh, Bohannon will come back. Uh, but the Penguins also uh, picked up some kids in the portal. Uh, and to talk about that and a couple of other things, we bring in the voice of the YSU basketball Penguins, the men's team, uh, Rob Schmidt. Mr. Schmidt, sir, how are you today? Oh, uh, that's well, not too bad. What do we got, Tuesday? It's a Tuesday, but it's nice out. Am I correct? Yeah, it's beautiful out. Okay, I haven't been outside. I have no Probab- in it's probably going to be the only uh, decent day this week. Really? Well, yeah. I mean, temperature-wise, I mean, it's going to be a little chilly tomorrow and Thursday. I, I have not seen the forecast for Saturday. Am I, uh, a- am I going to continue to be a uh, charmed life, or am I going to ultimately get uh, drenched on Saturday? That's the main question. I don't know, but... Uh... I won't be down on the sideline with you this Saturday, so I'll be inside the, uh, the the Constantini Center. So if it does rain, you're a man on an island. What the heck? I mean, what's going on here? Why why are you uh, why are you getting the opportunity to go in the press box? What the hell, Rob? <laughs> well, Dre Smith, who normally does our uh, our broadcasts for uh, ESPN three or ESPN plus, uh, is kind of. Uh, several other sports as they all overlap in the spring, including women's golf. And um, I'm going to have to do the old fillaroo on Saturday for Dre. All right. Well, it's telling me partly cloudy skies during the morning, becoming overcast in the afternoon with a 9% chance of rain. So uh, I uh, we're, we're in good shape then. Okay. I miss being there. I miss being there with you. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Whatever. I mean, you're going to be in the, <laughs> you're going to be in the comforts of a cozy press box and I'm going to be outside in the elements Whatever. <laughs> hey, uh, speaking of elements, uh, we got a lot of elements going on with the men's basketball team. Some some great news that was announced yesterday after the show. Uh, Garrett Covington has announced that he's going to stay at Youngstown State. Uh, he and Michael Lacuche coming back to Youngstown. And the Penguins got busy with the transfer portal. They got a couple of kids coming in. So let's talk a little bit about uh, what is going to be in a lot of ways, uh, a welcome back to uh, to some kids that uh, that we're hoping to see in their final year of el- eligibility, uh, but also uh, some some new blood coming into the uh, basketball program. Well, you know, the thing with Garrett is pretty much what you and I had talked about with with Michael Acuche when it came out that he was going to be returning for his fifth year. So, you know, really with Garrett. Uh, it's just another stabilizing force. It's just another guy who's who's kind of been through the Horizon League, understands the length of the season, um, knows what it takes to be successful. Um, you know, a kid that's already scored over a thousand points. Um, you know, really, you know, he's had three game winners, uh, game winning shots in his career here at YSU. Um, you know, he just he's your best defender. He's a two time All League defensive player in the Horizon. So he's just. He's a guy that you need to, as a veteran leadership uh, because nobody, and, and, and maybe Nas be the only guy, but really nobody on this team was playing better over the last month and a half of this past season than Garrett Covington. Um, you know, he really had come on, uh, had a 30 point game uh, earlier, you know, near the end of the season there. Um, you know, he really kind of turned it on um, and, and really. You know, that backdoor cut he and Nas had together was virtually unstoppable. So it's exciting to have him back. It just, it's just another force that you can turn to, um, you know, when you're trying to make another run at this thing in, in, in the winter with the Horizon League. Okay, now the million-dollar question. Obviously, with Covington back and Akuche back, we're looking for the hat trick. Probably the most important guy 
Uh, no disrespect to uh, to Garrett or to mm-hmm. Michael, but uh, Nas Bohannon is an extremely important guy, uh, and if we can get him back, then, uh, boy, that makes life a whole lot easier. What is the status? Have, has anyone heard uh, what Nas Bohannon is, is thinking at this point? Nothing definitive. He's still weighing a few options. Um, you know, the, the, again, I think that the percentages are leaning towards him returning, uh, but I know he is trying to weigh every possible option. Um, not that he would go to another school, just what would he do post YSU, and you know, what does that mean for him and his, in his, you know, for his family? Um, so I think he's trying to weigh all of his options carefully. Um, you know, I, I've seen him here. I've seen him doing, you know, some workouts with other members of the team. So. You know, it's not as if he's distanced himself at all from this basketball team. And, and you're right. You know, with a team that's that looks to be guard heavy, um, to have a guy like Nas who can go in there and rebound as well as anybody, give you a post presence. Um, it, it's essential that he returns uh, because it would be a big hit to the front line if he does not come back next season. Rob Schmidt joining us on the MP Vivo Heating and Air Conditioning Hotline. You you mentioned uh, the guard uh, play and how YSU has a lot of guards. They added to the guard family uh, as they bring in Chris Shelton, a transfer from Hampton. Uh, this is a kid that's that's pretty uh, pretty prolific from three point range. His three point accuracy last year at Hampton. Forty-eight point six percent from downtown. Uh, that is a uh, th- that is a really nice percentage, and hopefully the Penguins can get all of that and then some in the twenty one twenty two campaign. Yeah, everything I've been reading uh, about you know the kids that are coming in, uh, albeit the high school kids or, or through the portal, um, you know, seem to have some really nice credentials. Um, you know, they're not. A lot of guys that go to the portal, if you take a look, especially at our level, you know, they're, they're guys that are down on your depth chart. You know, they might average five points a game, uh, two rebounds a game. Most of them, you know, are in that caliber where they may have played a lot of games, just didn't do a lot um, offensively or, or even rebounds or very little with assists. So those are guys that are going out into the portal looking for a new home where they can get minutes. Um but everything I'm reading about the you know the guys that are you know that are coming in here or supposedly coming in, um, you know had some pretty you know had some had some pretty eye popping numbers. Um, you know they they look it looks as if you know Coach Calhoun and the staff have have addressed some some offensive issues. If you remember correctly, there were there were some times last year you know especially when Darius Quisenberry wasn't in uniform or on the floor. You know, where offensively they struggled to find a go-to guy, a guy that they could depend upon, you know, who could shoot 18, 20, 20 footers or, you know, consistently knock down a three when needed. And I think they, they realized that was a, a deficiency offensively last year that, you know, sometimes you were just looking at who was going to score points for you. Um, you know, there were times that maybe only one guy was dependable last year, you know, when they would go into the bench. So I think that was an issue that they wanted to resolve, and and that was finding guys who they feel can consistently shoot the ball from three-point range or at least can get you a basket, you know, when when you're down at the end of a shot clock or down at the end of a game. Rob Schmidt joining me on the MP Vivo Heating and Air Conditioning Hotline. The other two guards coming to Youngstown State. Owen Long is a transfer from Marysville University. He's a 6'1 guard out of Sykeston, Missouri. Uh, 19.3 points per game, 47% from the field, 42 and a third uh, from three-point range. Uh, and then you have the uh, the other player, uh, uh, Tevin Olison, a transfer from the University of the Cumberlands. Uh, that's a JC, if I'm not mistaken, a junior college. Uh, he's a 6'4 guard from Memphis, Tennessee. Uh, 23 points per game, five rebounds, two and a half assists per game. 51.5 plus percent from the field, 41.5 percent from three point range. I believe, if I'm not mistaken, uh, I, I still have some friends in, uh, in the uh, Jackson area, and uh, I, one or two of our schools from Jackson uh, played uh, Tevin Allison when he was in high school in Memphis, and they 
uh, they told me this kid was pretty special. So I, I, um, I look forward to seeing this kid play. Yeah, actually, the Cumberlands is an NAIA school. Um, and if I'm not mistaken, that the, the connection very well may be um, one of our assistant coaches here, Ethan Faulkner, uh, before he joined the staff here at Youngstown State, actually worked for the College of the Cumberland. So, um, you know, he, I'm sure he still has some ties there, obviously, uh, but has a connection. Uh, but that's where he came from. Um, after playing collegiately at Northern Kentucky, he was on the staff there for three years at the University of the Cumberland. So um, I, I, I think he still got some buddies there, um, and obviously they steered him in the right direction here with, with uh, that youngster. Rob, it seems to me with the three guards that they have picked up, uh, this this tells me that, uh, that, that Coach Jarrett is uh, basically saying, hey, guys that – uh, were guards uh, on my team last year. You're about to be challenged. Let's see what you're made of. Well, and I think, you know, when he came here from Fairmont, um, you know, he liked to get up and down the floor. He, he had a lot of guys that could shoot uh, in transition. Um, and, I, and I think he wants to get back to that a little bit. But, you know, so I think, you know, he's, he's going to a guard route. But, again, guys at 6'4 are a nice matchup problems, like Daniel Agoro is 6'5. But you're right. They, they, they probably got to put, you know, the twos and the threes on notice that it's wide open, and that includes guys like Miles Hunter and Alex Varga, who are a year ago, here a year ago, and, and showed flashes. Um, so I think, you know, it'll be open competition. Um, but again, I think in this league, and, and right now, and, and I'll, I'll, I'll kind of get to a point here, it, it's, it's imperative that you have shooters. And here's, here's my thought is, you know, Cleveland State, when you get down to it, did a great job, obviously, winning the league, getting to the NCAA tournament, and, and Dennis Gates deserves all the credit for that. Because in all honesty, when you look at that team individually, they're not very good by themselves, but you put that team together at Cleveland State, and as hard as they play, and as well as they execute, and they play defense, it makes them a tough matchup. And then you get guys like a Trago Million, you know, who who at times can have a game, you know, like he had against us, where he scores over twenty. Um, you know, they didn't have anybody at Cleveland State that you know was a huge score. So what I'm getting at is, if you're going to beat Cleveland State, and Wright State and Northern Kentucky teams that play really good defense. And last year we had problems against the zone. We had problems shooting over the zone, and teams knew that. And and they, you know, so we faced a lot of that a season ago. As you well know, you got to shoot over it. So I think they've realized that to beat the zone and to beat teams that you know play that pack line defense and try to sag inside inside around the basket or want to take Miles Bohan out of the game like Oakland did. You've got to have some guys that can shoot the ball consistently. And, and I think, you know, to, to our guys' credit, uh, the staff went out, and I think they addressed that problem, um, you know, to an extent that now, you know, hopefully you've got more than enough shooters to overcome, you know, any of those lags that we had last year on the floor. Rob, the talent level is certainly there from a shooting standpoint. There's, there's some kids left over, and I, I still – I'm very high on uh, on Alex Vargo. I I mm-hmm. truly believe that Vargo is going to be the guy uh, that's going to live up to expectations, and and I expect him to uh, to be a major scorer in the next year or two with this team. Uh, but but certainly the potential is there. Uh, if you get uh, if you get Nas Bohannon to uh, to come back. Uh, there's going to be all kinds of expectations for this team because. Truth be told, I don't think that there is, at least in the Horizon League, I don't think there will be a weakness on this team within the context of the Horizon League if Nas Bohannon comes back. And we'll have a lot of expectations for this basketball team. Yeah, I'd like to see one more big, but you're right. We you know, we didn't have that guy last year, so it wasn't as if you know they've got to fill that void coming into this season. You do get Jameer Thomas back, albeit, you know, coming off the ACL. We'll see how that responds, you know, what he'll be able to do in the first, you know, month and a half of the season as opposed to the second half of the season. I think he'll, he'll make dramatic improvements. Um, but, 
but yeah, if Nas comes back, then you feel better inside. Should he not come back, you now have to find a big man to to further get inside to help Akuche and and Jameer Thomas, because other than that, that's really where you're kind of thin. If you remember last year, you know, at times, Jeff Hampering at 6'4", had to play down low and guard guys much bigger than him, which, you know, really put us at a disadvantage. So if Mons comes back, it, it sure does take the, you know, take some of that, some of that responsibility off of finding another big man. Well, and, and you made mention uh, with Michael Lacouche coming back, and we had this conversation when uh, when he made the announcement. The big winner in that, not just the the Penguins as a team, Sheik Traore, uh, is is a big winner as well because you know he's the guy that has been spending an awful lot of time uh, trying to learn the ins and outs of this league and 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 just basically trying to get his game up to the standards of Michael Akuche. So, uh, you know, if Nas doesn't come back, you go into the transfer portal, you get a big guy, uh, and you hope and pray that Shake grows up. Uh, but yep. if but if Nas comes back and Shake grows up, holy smokes, does yeah. this team have a really, really good chance at things. No, it's a really good point, Ron. That's, that's, that's really, it's a really good point to bring Shake up because he could be – he could be that guy that makes that monumental leap. Um, he'll still obviously be considered a freshman. Um, yeah, no, you're you're 100 right about that. I, that's a it's a great point when you include Shake into the mix um, because I know they were high on him prior to last season. Uh, there was talk that he might actually start when the season began. So you know he still has that potential. Um, I like what you said about Alex Marco. I agree. I like his shot a lot. Um, you know, Miles Hunter at six five gives you some length. Um, you know, another guy at six eight is Will Dunn. You know, we'll see what he does in the off season as far as strengthening his body. Um, right now, I don't know that he's a guy that that you can depend upon inside. Uh, I think he's a stretch four like an Akuche who can easily step out and, and hit the big three for you. Um, but you're right; that's, that's a great point you made about Shake. Well, Will Dunn needs about 50 million cheeseburgers and uh, Big Macs over at McDonald's across the way from uh, uh, from Beagley. Uh, get him to uh, go about 5,000 calories a day and uh, and stick him in a weight room so he can get bigger. He can hang out with me. I'll show him all the good places to eat. <laughs> you and me both. I mean, uh, good Lord, let's put about 40 pounds on this kid's body because, I, I mean, I don't want to say he's thin, uh, but he could go through a couple of, uh, couple of doors, uh, you know, the little narrow part of the, uh, of the, of the space uh, in, in, between, uh, in between the closed doors. My man could go walk through some of those. I don't want to say he's thin, but he's pretty thin. <laughs> yeah, this would be, uh, it'll be fun to watch him mature, and, and this summer will be big for his, his step forward at the collegiate level. Yeah, this is good news for uh, for the Penguins. Yeah. And, you know, I, I'm going to be really curious, and I think Jared Calhoun uh, can speak of this as well. There was an awful lot of expectations put on this team at the beginning of the year. My God, even Dick Vitale was, uh, was raving about how uh, Youngstown State was going to be uh, taking care of business in the Horizon League this year, that they were the team to watch. Uh, and I don't know if that really affected some folks, but man, if if um, if there's more expectations on this team this year, I would think that the team is going to learn from what happened last year and, and roll with the "we believe in you" uh, type of talk. Roll with that in in any way a, a little bit better than what they did last year. Well, I think what you'll see when the preseason poll comes out is, you know, obviously we won't get as much hype as they did a year ago. Um, you know, all the hype's going to go to Wright State, Detroit Mercy, and Cleveland State. Um, those will be the three teams. Um, if Oakland loses um, uh, Daniel Oladapo, you know, they, they'll, they'll, they'll struggle um, early on. But, yeah, those, your three darlings this year are going to be Wright State, Detroit Mercy, and Cleveland State. Um, so, you know, I think that'll take a little bit of the preseason pressure off of our guys, a chance to, you know, practice a little harder. Obviously, if there's no COVID restrictions this year, they can get in the gym sooner uh, to try and mesh with these newcomers um, and the guys that are returning. 
Yeah, let me let me talk about this before we let you go. And we're speaking with Rob Schmidt. He is the play-by-play voice of the YSU men's basketball team. With the COVID restrictions, obviously, uh, the guys can't get together all at once. But uh, are are the kids that that just signed with the Penguins uh, from various NAIA and junior colleges are they all on campus right now? No, I don't believe so. Um... I, I would think they would be here sometime in the summer if they've already signed um, their their paperwork here. Um, but no, I don't. I don't think any of them are here early. I don't believe so. Well, this is this is certainly going to be an awful lot of fun to watch all of these all of these new faces uh, and uh, some of the guys that are coming back as well. And you know, hopefully, we're going to have a conversation very soon, and uh, both of us will have a smile on our face. Uh, if Nas Bohannon does indeed decide to come back. That that would be the cherry on top of what looks to be a perfect Sunday right now. Yeah, you're 100% right. Hopefully, you know, they'll get word here soon. Um, again, you know, he's trying to figure out what's best for him as an individual and a, and a grown man moving forward. So we wish Nas all the best. And hopefully we see one more year out of him and, and what he's meant to this program. You know, he's he's really been a, a huge rock i mean you know he's 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 got a thousand points and a thousand rebounds and, you know he's he's a great individual on and off the floor and, and i hope to see him back one more year rob schmidt the voice of the ysu men's basketball team we were talking about the sunday you know when you and i work together hey there's the nuts so uh, uh the nuts on top of the on top of the sunday so it's all good man way, way to bring it all together buddy well done all right, uh, look forward to uh, seeing you on Saturday while you're having some fun doing whatever in the booth. I'll, uh, I'll hopefully brave the elements and not get, not get rained on uh, on Saturday. <laughs> all right, and I'll see, I'll see you Saturday morning. All right, brother. All the best Thanks, to you. Rob. Rob Schmidt, the voice of the YSU men's basketball program, joining me on the MP Vivo heating and air conditioning hotline. We'll take a time out, be back with more. It's a Tuesday edition of Running Point presented by Greenwood Chevrolet on Mahoning Avenue in Austin Town. Back in a bit. New things happen all day. Some are good, some not so good. In today's complicated world, while you're busy working, playing, and living life, we're busy helping you make sense of the day's news. And there's only one place where it comes together with clarity, context, and accountability. It's 21 News at 6 with me, Madison Tromler, and Derek Steyer. 21 News at 6. It's what the day's news really means to you. Welcome home to a home made homier with Baird Brothers Fine Hardwoods. Inspiration starts at BairdBrothers.com and is turned into reality when high-quality hardwoods are delivered right to your home. Baird Brothers has the latest design trends, shiplap and skinny lap interior siding, antique oak rustic flooring, and, well, you'll find them all at BairdBrothers.com. Ordered easily, delivered conveniently, enjoyed comfortably. BairdBrothers.com. WRS Wealth Advisors, the area's premier wealth and retirement specialists, located on South Avenue in Boardman. Hi, this is Jim Myers with Myers Family Insurance your local Medicare and retirement resource. We're excited to have sports back. Whether you're on the field or cheering from the stands, sports unifies communities and brings hope for the future. We're all one team working together. At Myers Family Insurance, we know the importance of a great team. Our team continues to grow to help you with your Medicare and retirement needs. The annual election period is October 15th through December 7th. Now's the time to make sure your plan continues to meet your needs for the upcoming year. Call today. Hi, I'm Colin Chupa. And I'm Kelsey Clem from K-Squared Marketing. Our boutique marketing firm specializes in media planning and buying, public relations, event marketing strategies, and strategic sponsorships. We can integrate our services with your existing game plan, or we can be your entire marketing team. Your goals, our game plan. Let's, Let's win, win together. together. Call K-Squared Marketing at 330-623-2730 or visit ksquared.marketing to learn more.
Chevrolet, Hubbard can help you get the financing you need regardless of your situation. I'm Tony Pache, and I've helped thousands of customers in Northeast Ohio and Western Pennsylvania buy a vehicle. Bad credit, no credit, no problem. I can get you approved for a low interest loan and maybe even a low payment lease on a new car at the number one Chevy dealership in Trumbull County for three years in a row. Visit HubbardChevy.com to get pre-approved or come see me, Tony Page, to get a new vehicle today. Remember, folks, Hubbard can help. Quality, customer service, and integrity. Those are the four words that have driven our success since 1957 at Joe Dickey Electric. Joe Dickey Electric is one Mahoning Valley landmark business that stays current with the requirements of our customers. Family owned and managed, we are an electrical contractor and energy solutions provider. Every member of our team adds to his or her skill set through ongoing training. Residential, commercial, industrial, automotive, and more. We keep ahead of the needs of our customers with a fleet of more than 50 vehicles and 24-7 emergency service, so you're never left in the dark. The 4M company, being an architect and construction manager for over 40 years, has had the opportunity to use many different electrical businesses for our projects. The depth, quality, and knowledge and attention to detail displayed by Dickey Electric makes them stand out above all the rest. For state-of-the-art expertise and a timeless commitment to our customers, contact Joe Dickey Electric. We are everything electrical. When looking for home design inspiration, don't just be inspired, be Baird inspired. Whether new or remodeling, Baird Brothers has the latest trends like shiplap to refresh your home. Go from inspiration to installation with our wide selection of in-stock American hardwoods. From the rustic charm of antique oak to the warmth of traditional cherry, Baird Brothers has what you need to make your home inspiring. Baird Brothers, our family's heritage, your family's home. Welcome back to a Tuesday edition of Running Point presented by Greenwood Chevrolet on Mahoning Avenue in Austintown. The MP Vivo Heating and Air Conditioning Hotline open for business. 330-886-0813. That's 330-886-0813. Congrats to the Fitch Falcons, uh, the uh, girls softball team softball team, excuse me, as they picked up their fifth victory of the season. A 17-run third-inning explosion uh, that got it done as the Fitch Falcons took down Hallen 22-3 to uh, for their fifth victory of the season. Falcons are now 5-1 and one on the campaign, just having themselves a solid, solid year. They have a run differential of plus 64 in their six games this year. Uh, so they're averaging a 10-point victory or 10 runs, excuse me, a 10-run victory, uh, a 10-plus runs every time they win. Uh, they have scored 75 runs in six games. Kids, that's an average of 12 and a half runs per game. That's 12 and a half runs a game. Holy Toledo. And, and they're not even giving up two runs a game at this point. Just a tick under two runs per game. That is some really, really obnoxiously crazy numbers put up by uh, Austin Town Fitch uh, as they have a plus 64 run differential through six games. That is absolutely incredible. Um, the Fitch Falcons softball team, 5-1 and one in the campaign. And we talked with uh, the Falcons uh, softball coach, Steve Ward, before the season started. And he said this team was going to be good. I don't, <laughs> he wasn't lying. That's for dang sure. He was not lying. A 17 spot in the third inning. My goodness. I mean, you had to have batted around... Twice. You had to bat around twice in that inning. Uh, assuming you have 10 kids, assuming you have 10 kids in, in your lineup and you score 17 runs, if there's nobody on base, if, if, there, if, the, if the Falcons left nobody on base and they scored 17 runs, then you had to add the three outs, 18, 19, and 20. They batted around two times. Oh, my 
goodness, that's that's crazy good. All right, we got a uh, good schedule on on tap for the uh, for the area. DJ will be over in the Newcastle area, New Brighton. That is the home of Terry Francona. But people didn't know that. Uh, Terry Francona, his father, uh, who's no longer uh, no longer alive, unfortunately, uh, Tito, uh, and and uh, they lived in New Brighton, which is if you're traveling on um, 14 and you go into Pennsylvania, 14 turns into uh, 51. Uh, you go into Chippewa and you pick up 376. I think the first or second exit uh, on 376 headed toward the airport is New Brighton. It's it. I mean, it's not that far away from uh, from East Palestine, and not that far away from Youngstown, as a matter of fact. Anyway, New Brighton is going to be making the trip to uh, the Newcastle area as they take on Mohawk today. DJ will have that game uh, beginning at four fifteen. Uh, the Holy War at Bob Seen Park today. Cardinal Mooney will be hosting Ursland. Uh, you got a doubleheader of baseball today uh, at LeBray as Newton Falls will travel to Viking country to take on the LeBray Vikings. Uh, softball action, Fitch will be hosting Howland again. Uh, Boardman uh, will be doing some track and field events uh, from Boardman High School beginning at 5 o'clock. Canfield is hosting Warren Harding uh, that game begins at 5 o'clock. McDonald is going to be hosting Springfield. That's a 5 o'clock start. Uh, South Range is hosting Poland in both softball and baseball over at the complex, which is right at the school. Uh, you, uh, you park in the school, and, and it's uh, just off the uh, – uh, just a, maybe 100 feet from the school. Uh, it's at the uh, uh, gorgeous complex on State Route 46. Poland is uh, going to be playing uh, South Range in softball as well as baseball at the complex on State Route 46. Uh, baseball action from Struthers. Jefferson will be taking on Struthers. And baseball action from Fitch tonight. Howland is going to be traveling to Austin Town to take on the Falcons. That game will start at 7 o'clock. So uh, it should be fun. should be a good, good time as uh, Austin Town uh, Fitch will be taking on Howland in both softball as well as baseball. 330-886-0813, the MP Vivo heating and air conditioning hotline open for business, business as we are with you until 3 o'clock today, uh, taking you at Taking you through the afternoon on this Tuesday edition of Running Point, presented by Greenwood Chevrolet on Mahoning Avenue in Austin Town. All right, coming up at 2 o'clock today, we will hear from the skipper of the YSU baseball team, Dan Bertolini. Uh, that'll be coming up at 2 o'clock. Penguins split a series with Milwaukee over the weekend. Uh, they took the first two games of the series, lost the last two games. Well, I'll tell you what, and, and uh, Coach Bertolini said, hey, this team knows how to get it together offensively. And, man, the uh, the bats came out the final two games of this series. Uh, they, they started swinging the bats pretty well. Uh, but the Penguins had won the first two games of the series. Was kind of hoping the Penguins would take three out of four and take over second place in the Horizon League, uh, but they dropped the final two games of the series. Uh, but the YSU Penguins do get the split, which at the absolute minimum, that's what you want. Uh, you, as, a, uh, as a team that is, uh, is playing in any sport, you want to be able to have a 500 record away from home. Uh, bare minimum, a 500 record away from home, and you want to completely dominate uh, on your home field. And so far, that's what the Penguins are doing, at least in the Horizon League. Um, that's what they're doing. Uh, they're dominating their games uh, at Eastwood, and they're holding serve, at least for right now, they're holding serve uh, on the road. And that's exactly how the, uh, the Penguins need to do this. Now, there's a huge series coming up against Northern Kentucky. 
Look, Northern Kentucky is in fourth place in the um, in the Horizon League, and the top four teams go to the postseason. And for the Penguins, right now, they are in third place, and they're one game ahead of Northern Kentucky for fourth place. Or they're in third place. Northern Kentucky is in fourth place. One game in back of the uh, of the Penguins. Now, UIC is in fifth place. And right now, if the playoffs were to start, UIC would be on the outside looking in. But they're 9 and 11. UIC is two games in back of Youngstown State. And they're in fifth place. Uh, Milwaukee is three games ahead of UIC. They're in second place. So you can see two through five is really bunched up right now. Two through five is a very, very competitive race for second through fifth place in the Horizon League. One of these teams isn't going to be in the postseason because uh, the Horizon League only takes the top four teams. So one of these teams, uh, Milwaukee, Youngstown State, Northern Kentucky, UIC, one of these teams won't be going to the playoffs this year. Uh, and and the other three will go uh, to the playoffs. Pretty much a foregone conclusion uh, that Wright State is going to be in the playoffs. Yeah, Wright State is uh, is going to be in the uh, in the postseason. I can't imagine that Wright State doesn't uh, get into the playoffs. They're they're right now. I believe they're thirteen and three. Now they're not playing. Uh, they are not playing baseball again this weekend. As Wright State had a COVID situation. Uh, this will be the second consecutive week uh, that the uh, Wright State team is is not going to be playing baseball. Uh, they had their uh, cancellation against Purdue Fort Wayne. They're going to be canceled uh, this week against Oakland. They're going to be back at it uh, against Northern Kentucky. And it'll be a uh, three-game series. Actually, it should be a four-game series against Northern Kentucky. Uh, they will play the Norse. Uh, for the second uh, go around, uh, they'll play the Norse, and then they will play uh, at Purdue Fort Wayne, uh, Fort Wayne for four games, uh, Milwaukee for four games, and then they finish out the campaign against Oakland for four. But Wright State is going to play eight less baseball games in conference uh, than uh, than YSU, at least for right now. Knock on wood and hope and pray Youngstown State does not have the COVID situation that Wright State is going through right now. Uh, the Penguins will uh, take on Northern Kentucky this weekend, four-game series with Northern Kentucky. And then Oakland comes to Eastwood Field for a four-game series. And that's going to be a huge series, uh, especially if the Penguins struggle against Northern Kentucky. Oakland right now is three and thirteen. They're buried in the uh, in the Horizon League. They're in last place in the Horizon League, and it's going to be incredibly important for the Penguins to uh, sweep Oakland, or at the very least, take three out of four from Oakland. Uh, so they're going to be able to uh, continue along and and um, stay in the top four, but. Uh, it's bunched up in a big, big way right now. Northern Kentucky is 10-10 and 10 in conference play, one game behind third-place YSU. UIC is 9-11. and 11. They're in fifth place, but they're two games from being in third place. That's how competitive this, um, this conference is. And, you know, UIC did beat Youngstown State three out of four. Or, I'm sorry, YSU beat UIC uh, three out of four. So um, uh, the Penguins will hopefully be able to uh, to take care of business uh, when they take on UIC at the end of the month. This week, 
Uh, UIC is going to be taking on Purdue Fort Wayne at home before taking on Milwaukee next weekend over in Milwaukee. So uh, Milwaukee, Youngstown State, Northern Kentucky, UIC, they're going to be seeing plenty uh, plenty of uh, games between those four teams, uh, and it will be really entertaining to see who comes out of this uh, when it's all said and done. All right, we're going to take another time out, be back with more. It is a Tuesday edition of Running Point presented by Greenwood Chevrolet on Mahoning Avenue in Austin Town. Your teams work hard and give it all they've got. Well, so does ours, because 21 Sports and YSN give you extra effort when covering local sports. 21 Sports and YSN, winning coverage of our Valley's teams. No matter what the weather, be prepared with a reliable, efficient, rude gas furnace or air conditioner from MP Vivo Heating and Air Conditioning. Call your energy efficient expert, MP Vivo, today for a free estimate. Here at MP Vivo, we rely on rude, and so should you. Family Insurance knows the importance of a great team. Our team continues to grow to help you with your Medicare and retirement needs. The annual election period is October 15th through December 7th. Now's the time to make sure your plan continues to meet your needs for the upcoming year. Call today. It's storm season. I think we're under the gun for some heavy storms over the next couple of hours. And Storm Tracker 21 is ready. This is probably the one we're keeping a closer eye on. On air. And locally, we're going to have a lot of eyes on our area. Online. All right, let's talk high-risk future cast and the timing of this weather. On social media and on our app. Notice we'll have scattered showers on Thursday. Stay ready with Storm Trucker 21. The severe weather threat now through around sunset. Your first and last stop with your tax return should be with me, Tracy Bryden at Greenwood Chevrolet in Austintown. No other dealer goes the extra mile to bring you the largest selection of vehicles at one convenient location. With guaranteed credit approval, I will find you the right vehicle and the right financing options for you. I am ready to go the extra mile to show you why no other dealer sells more cars, finances more, and gets you more for your refund than Greenwood Chevrolet in Austintown. Welcome back to a Tuesday edition of Running Points presented by Greenwood Chevrolet on Mahoning Avenue in Austintown. Ron Potesta with you. MP Vivo Heating and Air Conditioning Hotline open for business. 330-886-0813. That's 330-886-0813. Uh, we made mention plenty of baseball and softball on the network tonight. Uh, also, uh, Indians and Pirates both in action. Tribe taking on the Chicago White Sox. Game two of their uh, series in Chicago. I believe it's game two of a four-gamer uh, in the south side of Chicago. Last night, weird ending uh, as the uh, Indians uh, were defeated by the White Sox. The White Sox getting the game-winning run on a throwing error by... Indians first baseman Yu Chang, as he tried to uh, get a force at second base, his throw to the second base bag clipped the uh, member of the White Sox, uh, the runner uh, going from first to second, clipped him on the side of his helmet and then ricocheted out into left field. And that enabled the run who was the runner who was on second base uh, when the play uh, started He was able to score without a throw at the plates as the White Sox pick up the victory. Uh, I believe Classe was uh, on the mound in the ninth inning, suffered the loss uh, for the Indians. He is um, stepping up as the uh, closer uh, in the early going for the Indians, and why not? This is the guy that um, this is the guy that the Indians picked up in the Corey Kluber deal. Uh, and he was um, 
he was suspended last year when uh, he took uh, human growth hormone pills or steroids. He was uh, he was suspended for eighty games, and uh, Class A immediately put himself in the doghouse. Uh, well, in the off season, he got himself right and came to spring training. And my goodness, this guy is, uh, he is throwing the ball exceptionally hard. He always has uh, thrown the ball really hard. He's, uh, he uh, had a fastball, and uh, scouts were saying that uh, his fastball was topping out at 100 miles an hour, throws a cutter. Uh, and sure enough, uh, this guy has thrown 36 pitches in all. Uh, and counting 36 pitches so far this year that have hit over 100 miles an hour. Uh, and that's just, man, that, that's impressive, uh, especially when you get a lot of movement on a, uh, on a cut fastball. Uh, when you when you think about cut fastballs, the, the, the first name that comes to mind is obviously the GOAT, uh, Mariano Rivera. Uh, and his cut fastball, and and that pitch uh, sent Rivera into the all time uh, all time saves leader, and he just um, you know he he went to Cooperstown based on that pitch. Uh, Class A throws that pitch, and he throws it harder uh, than Mariano Rivera did. Now Rivera's movement uh, a little bit more uh, than Class A. Uh, but certainly, uh, a class A, he can, he can bring it and, uh, he already has a few saves. Uh, yesterday he came into the game in a tie game, uh, and he was, uh, given the loss on the throwing error by Yu Chang yesterday. So those two teams will go at it again, uh, tonight in Chicago. Pittsburgh will try to get even with San Diego. Padres knocked off the Pirates last night, 6-2. to two. You Darvish, I think he went seven strong innings uh, for San Diego last night. Just a solid, solid performance. And, uh, yeah, it's, it's going to be an awful lot of fun. Uh, we made mention of this yesterday. Uh, it was made official yesterday uh, by the Major League Baseball Draft League, Coco Crisp. Uh, who uh, spent some time in the Indians organization. Uh, he is the manager of the Mahoning Valley Scrappers. Uh, now, given the fact that the Indians uh, and the Scrappers had a, a short season Class A relationship since the Scrappers began uh, minor league baseball in 1999, they were always the affiliate of the Cleveland Indians, uh, and now with the New York Penn League disintegrating, and some of those teams, uh, I believe West Virginia State College, Williamsport, and Mahoning Valley are four of the six teams that are taking part in the brand new MLB Draft League. Uh, it was it was important for someone uh, with Indians ties, I suppose. Uh, to be the manager of this team. So Coco Crisp, who uh, it was a member of the Indians uh, 2002 through 2005, and he came back during the World Series run the Indians were on in 2016. Uh, Coco Crisp is going to be the Mahoning Valley Scrappers manager uh, to begin uh, this new era of Scrappers baseball as they are now in the Major League Baseball draft league and again uh this league is all about the draft eligible kids participating in both college junior college as well as high school uh the team is going to be made up by prep baseball report they're going to be in charge of uh getting the invites out and the season is going to begin six weeks from yesterday. Uh, six weeks from yesterday, the Scrappers are going to be in West Virginia opening up the 2021 campaign. Six weeks from tomorrow, uh, the Penguins will open up the home portion of the inaugural Major League Baseball Draft League season 
as the Penguins, uh, Penguins, the Scrappers uh, will be taking on State College. Uh, all of the games Monday through Saturday will be at 7.05, and the Sunday games will be at 4.05. Uh, so you can certainly get your tickets, uh, 330-505-0000. Uh, that is the number to call. Give the Scrappers a call. Plenty of opportunities to, uh, to get on board with season tickets, partial season ticket plans, uh, as well as uh, single-game tickets uh, that are going to be on sale. And again, six weeks from tomorrow, the home portion of the season will begin. Uh, all of the home games will be heard while well, yours truly doing the uh, doing the broadcast. This will be fun. Uh, and all of the games will be heard on YSNlive.com. So uh, certainly uh, tune in. We'll have an awful lot of fun with this. And again, the Prep Baseball Report, they're going to be in charge of getting the rosters together. Dana Ballish brought up some interesting points regarding the uh, eligibility and the, um, the various uh, hoops that people may have to go through. For example, uh, I don't believe there's going to be a lot of high school kids involved in this. I think it's going to be more junior college uh, and college. But uh, if there are some high school kids involved in this, uh, you would certainly not see those kids until uh, their baseball season, their high school baseball season, is over. Uh, now, you know, here in Ohio, the uh, the state tournaments are going to believe are going to be I believe the second week in June the second or the third week in June will be the state baseball championships uh, over at Canal Park the home of the Akron Rubber Ducks the Indians Double A affiliate so let's say that one of the uh, kids who is been invited to the uh, to uh, to take part in the MLB draft league. Let's say one of those kids uh, happens to still be playing baseball with their high school baseball team. Well, this kid won't be playing in the MLB Draft League until the high school baseball season has concluded. Uh, it would be the same thing with uh, those kids that are going to be uh, college eligible. Uh, the, uh, the draft eligible kids in college. Uh, let's say that a handful of them are knee deep in the super regionals or, uh, fingers crossed, the College World Series that is held every year in Omaha, Nebraska. Well, if that's the case, uh, they won't be appearing in the Major League Baseball uh, Draft League inaugural season until their college baseball season is finished. Uh, so those kids, uh, you know, they'll get invited. Uh, but they may not be taking part in the beginning of the season until their high school or junior college or college baseball team has concluded. The other part of this that I hope Major League Baseball is, is going to strongly suggest, uh, at least I hope they do, I, I would hope that they strongly suggest that Kids that are drafted, and, and I expect most, if not all, of the kids playing in this league to be drafted. Uh, we, we, that's, that's the goal, is to have most, if not all, of these kids playing in this league to get drafted. And, and that's the goal. Uh, let's say that um, most of the kids get drafted. What happens when the kid signs with the team? Let's, let's say that... Um, player from uh, Vanderbilt is playing for the, for the Scrappers and he gets selected in the third round and he immediately signs a contract. What becomes of this kid? Well, hopefully, fingers crossed, Major League Baseball is going to hopefully strongly suggest to the 30 teams, keep your kids in the league until the season is over. And then when the season is over, uh, instructional league, you can have the kid uh, possibly go to uh, go to a farm team. Uh, I mean, let's be honest, uh, this season ends around August the 15th. Uh, that, that's when the, uh, th that is when the 
uh, the inaugural uh, Major League Baseball Draft League is supposed to end uh, sometime no later than August 15th. I believe the season will end on um, August the 12th, which is on a Thursday, and then they would open up a best-of-three championship between the top two teams in the league. And game three in that regard would be August the 15th. So the season ends at August the 15th. Uh, well, you still have uh, Labor Day is the 6th of September. That's when the minor league baseball season comes to a close. You would still have four weeks or three weeks, I beg your pardon. You would still have three weeks worth of minor league baseball to be played uh, if one of the one of the kids uh, who is signed by a major league team uh, and finishes out and, and let's say they uh, win or finish in second place and the, and the best of three series goes three games and the, and the season ends on August the 15th, if they go to a low-A team uh, or wherever their minor league team is on August the 16th, you have three weeks' worth of minor league baseball because the season doesn't end until Labor Day, September the 6th. Uh, and then if your team is in the postseason or if this, this kid's team is in the postseason, well, then there's another week or two of, uh, of professional baseball to get their feet wet. So there is a, a lot of questions that's, uh, that are certainly going to be answered, a lot of kinks that are going to be uh, worked out in the inaugural year. One of the other questions, and I think Anthony brought this up, okay, what happens if a, uh, if a player uh, is playing in this draft league uh, and, and he's a high school kid and he's trying to improve his draft stock, he gets drafted in the fourth round, decides he doesn't want to sign, uh, does, is he still able to go to college? Of course he is uh, because none of these kids are going to get paid. That's, that's the other part of this. None of these kids are going to be paid, so you're not going to be screwing up anybody's eligibility if, let's say, um, let's say that one of the kids playing is a junior in college. College kids that are three years into college are eligible for the MLB draft. So let's say that a junior uh, uh not a redshirt sophomore a redshirt sophomore or a junior one or the other uh, three years into college and they go into the MLB draft league but their draft uh they they didn't they didn't do very well and and they wind up uh ninth tenth eleventh round in the draft and they think you know what another year in college I might be able to make sure that I can parlay this into uh, a higher draft pick. Well, they can go back to school. Th there's no problem with going back to school because, again, nobody's getting paid. The players are not getting paid in this league. And there's a reason for that, and, and that's just in case a player doesn't do well in this league and they aren't happy with their uh, with where they were drafted, or you know, let's say they're not even drafted, uh, they can go back to college. Uh, the high school kid can still honor whatever school offered him a scholarship. Yeah, they can they can still do that. Uh, I'll give a great example. Jeff Bruni is uh, supposed to go to Ohio State, I believe. Uh, um, I, I believe he's supposed to go to Ohio State. I'll, I'll even give a better example uh, because I don't know the whereabouts of of of, of uh, Bruni. Uh, and it's not Jeff. That's his dad. So that's a that's bad on my part. Trey Pancake. Pancake is is dealing this year. I, mean, I don't know if anyone has seen this kid is hitting the ball ridiculously well. Let's say Prep Baseball Report gives Trey Pancake an unbelievable opportunity to play in the MLB Draft League. Undoubtedly, he would be with the Mahoning Valley Scrappers because, well, he's growing up in the Mahoning Valley. This would be a slam dunk. So let's say that Trey Pancake, who, by the way, has a scholarship offer at Ohio State University. Let's say Trey Pancake plays in the MLB Draft League and he does reasonably well. 
uh, and he comes around with a draft, and he's drafted in the fifth or sixth round. Then Trey would make a decision and say, you know, do I go to Ohio State, play play three years with the Buckeyes in hopes that I can improve on a fifth or sixth round draft pick? Or do I sign on the dotted line and go right into minor league baseball as a fifth or sixth round draft pick? If he decides, hey, look, you know what? Um, I, I can do better than fifth or sixth round three years down the road. I'm going to gamble on me. Uh, I believe that I can be a first round draft pick uh, with three solid years in a really good program in a really competitive league in one of the power five conferences. I believe I can be a first round pick in three years. I'm going to forego that. I'm not going to sign and I'm going to go to Ohio State. He can do it because he, he's not getting paid to play in this league. If the draft league were paying these kids now this becomes a situation where your amateur status is gone and the NCAA would then close the door on these kids and say you're not welcome you're you're playing technically you're you're a professional right now because they're paying you to play this game uh that makes you a professional you lost your amateur status That's it. That's why the draft league isn't paying anybody. Uh, this This is a brilliant concept. And again, brilliant concept in Major League Baseball are very... Uh, it's not very often, if at all, whenever I say brilliant concept and Major League Baseball in the same sentence. But this is a brilliant concept by Major League Baseball. Uh, the fact that they're not paying these guys... That is is enabling high school kids to play in this league in hopes of getting a monster payday, i.e. a first-round draft pick. Uh, if you get a first-round draft pick in Major League Baseball, cha-ching, 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 seven figures uh, of bonus money, which you're going to need because, uh, well, you don't get paid very much once you... You know, do away with a bonus. You're not getting paid all that much to play minor league baseball. You're going to be living on your bonus for a little while. Uh, so it's it's a great opportunity, but it's also the opportunity for the college kids who still have some eligibility left and the high school kids who have four years of eligibility left because they haven't started uh, they haven't started their college career yet. All of these kids, they have an opportunity to go back to college or, or go to college if they choose. And the genius behind this is the fact that none of these kids are getting paid. So the main question is, how the hell are these kids going to uh, going to survive with no pay? Well, it's pretty easy. This is where the host families uh, come into play. And in years gone by, uh, the... Uh, the Scrappers have done a really, really nice job with their um, host families. A uh, bunch of host families uh, opened their doors uh, for members uh, back when the Scrappers were the Indians affiliate. Uh, members of the uh, of the uh, Scrappers would live with some of these host families, and they would, you know, they would provide them some uh, some meals and a place to put their head and, uh, on a pillow at night and. Uh, uh, just a, a great opportunity to uh, to get to know these kids, and an opportunity for the kids to uh, to uh, to have some family uh, with them. The same concept. That's uh, that is what is uh, certainly going to happen now with COVID. That's going to be an interesting. Um, it's going to be an interesting scenario, and obviously, Major League Baseball may have to um, may have to invest. Uh, in the uh, opportunities of uh, getting these kids uh, uh, some affordable housing. Uh, you know, again, with COVID, I don't know what the protocol is going to be uh, as far as the kids living uh, with members of, uh, members of the uh, uh, scrappers, season ticket holders who, who in recent years have opened the door uh, to members of the Mahoning Valley scrappers. With COVID, honestly, I don't know 
how this is going to work out. But again, the genius of the Major League Baseball Draft League is the fact these kids aren't getting paid. Therefore, they're still retaining their amateur status just in case uh, they aren't satisfied with where they were drafted or they weren't drafted at all. And they want to go back and uh, for the college kids that still have a, a year of eligibility left, they can go back uh, and play college baseball. For the high school kids that uh, that still have their four years of eligibility, they can absolutely uh, go to the school that in which uh, they were given a scholarship. They can they can go to that school. So this is a, it's a great concept, and I men, made mention of this. In previous years, no disrespect to the New York Penn League. It's a, it was a fun league. It was absolutely a fun league. But I think there's more talent, potentially more talent, in this league than in the New York Penn League. And while it is true, the New York Penn League has professionals who have signed a contract... Uh, you know, some of those kids were not drafted. Some of those kids, they, they, they weren't drafted. They were signed as a free agent. Now, a lot of those kids uh, from outside of the United States or outside the island of Puerto Rico, you don't go to a draft. Uh, you're simply signed as an uh, international free agent. Now, that's a part of baseball that uh, I would hope Major League Baseball in the near future will consider a worldwide draft instead of a um, uh, just a, a draft for the American kids and the and the kids that grew up in Puerto Rico uh, I hope Major League Baseball is able to do a worldwide draft where now the international bonuses and all that other garbage goes away where these guys would be signed and they would give they would be given far less bonuses. Uh, but they would be signed and they would, you know, go into the States and, and, and play baseball and see if they can uh, make it through minor league baseball and on into the major leagues. But right now, kids that are in Venezuela, the Dominican, Mexico, Colombia, uh, kids that escape communist Cuba to go somewhere else, they, they're not eligible for the draft. They get signed as an international free agent. So a lot of those kids... Um, started out in the New York Penn League. Uh, but this particular league could be a better league because we're assuming, and, and I might be wrong on this, I'll be curious to see what the numbers are like, we're assuming a very high percentage of the players playing in the Major League Baseball Draft League are going to be drafted. Now, not all of them, but a, a real high percentage of them will be drafted. So there is a pretty good chance that you could be seeing better talent than years gone by uh, with the New York Penn League. So it's a, it's a fascinating uh, thing that, that uh, the scrappers have gotten themselves involved in. And given the fact that they're only one of four New York Penn League teams that have survived, at least in terms of... Um, keeping their baseball. Uh, I know Hudson Valley and Brooklyn are going to be in organizational baseball. I believe Hudson Valley is in uh, uh, high A baseball and Brooklyn is now uh, in double A, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, so uh, those two organizations have um, uh, have moved on and, and will be playing full season, uh, full season baseball. But then the four teams that... Uh, that were chosen to be part of the draft league, uh, they're going to be heading in a, in a different direction. But I, I'm sure that the folks in West Virginia, Williamsport, and State College are just as excited for the inaugural Major League Baseball Draft League as the fans here in the Mahoning Valley. And And I would hope when the season begins six weeks from tomorrow, the home portion of this season... When it begins six weeks from tomorrow, fireworks after the game, uh, hopefully we'll have a sellout crowd uh, and or at least the maximum allowed uh, by the state of Ohio in this ridiculous COVID world that we're living in. And hopefully 
knock on wood, we get rid of this as soon as possible. All right, 330-886-0813, the MP Vivo Heating and Air Conditioning Hotline. Open for business. We're back in a bit. Stick around. Your first and last stop with your tax return should be with me, Tracy Bryden at Greenwood Chevrolet in Austintown. No other dealer sells more cars, finances more, and gets you more for your refund than Greenwood Chevrolet in Austintown. WRS Wealth Advisors is the area's premier wealth and retirement specialist. With our combined 70 years experience and comprehensive wealth strategy, we assist our clients attain their goals. Call 330-965-0370 to learn more about our individual and corporate financial planning services or visit wrswealthadvisors.com. Good luck, athletes. Hi, everyone. This is DJ Yokely with Your Sports Network. We appreciate your support of YSN and welcome you to the YSN family. Our broadcast streams are brought to you live and at no cost to you by sponsors that are local to this community. Without the vision and generosity of our sponsors and partners, we would not be able to bring this game to you today. So please support the great businesses and leaders that are making this game possible. And if you're a business in need of great advertising and sponsorship opportunities, feel free to head over to our site for more information on the right fit for you. We are local, we are loyal, and we are live. We are YSN. Ah, the details. Baird Brothers Fine Hardwoods is one fine ride. Perfect cornering, superb handling, sporty and stylish, power to spare, plus awesome mileage. Yeah, jaw-droppingly beautiful lines and well-appointed with luxurious trim. Put more oomph in your life and start beholding the molding. Find your home's fine hardwood at BairdBrothers.com. For heating, cooling, and indoor air quality, the Mahoney Valley Trust MP Vivo Heating and Air Conditioning. Offering worry-free repair, service, and installation. Call MP Vivo today for a free estimate. MP Vivo Heating and Air Conditioning. We're your energy-efficient experts. Planning a project around your home or rental property? Trust the electrical service to the local experts with 62 years of serving the Mahoning Valley. Joe Dickey Electric is your local go-to source for responsive, reliable residential electrical work. From everyday maintenance and repairs to new installations, electrical upgrades, and safety inspections, no job is too big or too small. Call Joe Dickey Electric today, 800-549-3976, or visit DickeyElectric.com. That's DickeyElectric.com. New things happen all day. Some are good, some not so good. In today's complicated world, while you're busy working, playing, and living life, we're busy helping you make sense of the day's news. And there's only one place where it comes together with clarity, context, and accountability. It's 21 News at 6 with me, Madison Tromler, and Derek Steyer. 21 News at 6. It's what the day's news really means to you. Welcome home to a home made homier with Baird Brothers Fine Hardwoods. Inspiration starts at BairdBrothers.com and is turned into reality when high quality hardwoods are delivered right to your home. Baird Brothers has the latest design trends, shiplap and skinny lap interior siding, antique oak rustic flooring, and well, you'll find them all at BairdBrothers.com. Ordered easily, delivered conveniently, enjoyed comfortably, BairdBrothers.com. WRS Wealth Advisors, the area's premier wealth and retirement specialists. Located on South Avenue in Boardman. Hi, this is Jim Myers with Myers Family Insurance, your local Medicare and retirement resource. We're excited to have sports back. Whether you're on the field or cheering from the stands, sports unifies communities and brings hope for the future. We're all one team working together. At Myers Family Insurance, we know the importance of a great team. Our team continues to grow to help you with your Medicare and retirement needs. The annual election period is October 15th through December 7th. Now's the time to make sure your plan continues to meet your needs for the upcoming year. Call today. Hi, I'm Colin Chupa. And I'm Kelsey Clem from K-Squared Marketing. Our boutique marketing firm specializes in media planning and buying, public relations, event marketing strategies, and strategic sponsorships. We can integrate our services with your existing game plan, or we can be your entire marketing team. Your goals, our game plan. Let's, Let's win, win together. together. Call K-Squared Marketing at 
1-800-242-2730 or visit ksquared.marketing to learn more. Chevrolet, Hubbard can help you get the financing you need regardless of your situation. I'm Tony Pache and I've helped thousands of customers in Northeast Ohio and Western Pennsylvania buy a vehicle. Bad credit, no credit, no problem. I can get you approved for a low interest loan and maybe even a low payment lease on a new car at the number one Chevy dealership in Trumbull County for three years in a row. Visit HubbardChevy.com to get pre-approved or come see me, Tony Pache, to get a new vehicle today. Remember folks, Hubbard can help. Welcome back to a Tuesday edition of Running Point. The opinions and views. Yeah, I didn't want that. The following program. Hey, 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 speakers hey, 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 hey. And you, the host. you stop that right now. <laughs> you hit a bad button and uh, and stuff happens. I'm telling you. All right, 330-886-0813, the MP Vivo heating and air conditioning hotline open for business. Coming up at about 2 o'clock, we will hear from the skipper of the YSU uh, baseball penguins, uh, that would be Dan Bertolini. Uh, the Penguins and uh, Milwaukee split a four-game series. So Penguins remain one game behind Milwaukee for second place in the Horizon League. Coming into town, or I should say the Penguins coming into uh, Highland Heights, Kentucky uh, this weekend to take on the Northern Kentucky Norse. Uh, and the Norse are just one game in back of the Penguins for third place. And we made mention of this. There is a, a log jam right now. Second through fifth place. Milwaukee has a one-game lead on Youngstown State, a two-game lead on Northern Kentucky, and a three-game lead on UIC, second through fifth place. So the four teams that encompass second, third, fourth, and fifth, they're all separated by just three games. And considering all but one of these teams are ultimately going to be in the playoffs and the one team uh, is going to be left out. Yeah, that's that's going to be interesting. And, and uh, we made mention of this earlier in the broadcast. Uh, you're going to assume Wright State is in the playoffs. I mean, they're... they're First of all, nobody's going to beat Wright State the way Youngstown State did, uh, taking three out of four from Wright State at East Woodfield. That's not going to happen. Uh, Wright State will not lose three out of four to anyone the rest of the year. That's simply not going to happen. That is a really good baseball team. Uh, I would I, I expect Wright State to be one of those four teams. So we're automatically putting them in. And they're, and truth be told, they're probably going to win this division. Even though they're not playing uh, baseball this week, uh, again, with a COVID situation, uh, they're not playing baseball again this week. So they're going to play baseball next weekend against Northern Kentucky. Having said that, uh, so you've got three more teams and uh, four spots. I'm sorry, four teams for three spots. Well, Youngstown State just got finished playing Milwaukee. By the way, they end their 2021 regular season taking on Milwaukee at Eastwood Field, uh, which those four games could go a long way to determine where the Penguins are uh, in terms of whether they're going to be in the playoffs or not in in, in the postseason. Uh, but the Penguins are going to be seeing an awful lot of Northern Kentucky They've already played UIC once. They're going to be playing UIC again. Uh, so, you know, Northern Kentucky is going to be playing Milwaukee before the end of the season. Uh, they're going to be playing Youngstown State before the end of the season. They're going to be playing UIC. All four of these teams are going to be seeing plenty of each other before the end of the year. There, There is going to be some serious competition uh, for whoever gets in to the postseason. And again, the the final weekend series with Youngstown State welcoming Milwaukee to uh, Eastwood Field, <laughs> a playoff may be on the line when the Penguins play Milwaukee in that four-game season-ending series. Now, a lot of baseball to be played, and, and obviously this week, 
Uh, the Penguins, they're going to be taking on a team that is just one game in back of YSU for third place in the Horizon League. So Penguins are going to have to, at the very least, split a doubleheader. But obviously, we're greedy. We want them to sweep the doubleheader or, or sweep the four game series. Uh, but at the very least, take two out of four and keep keep the distance of one game. Uh, where the Penguins have a one-game lead on Northern Kentucky. Now, if they take three out of four, then that one-game lead goes to three games. If the Penguins sweep Northern Kentucky, now you've got five games between yourself and Northern Kentucky. On the flip side of this, if Northern Kentucky were to take three out of four at home, now you're looking at a one-game lead for Northern Kentucky, and YSU would fall one game in back of Northern Kentucky instead of being one game ahead. And, you know, I hope and pray to the baseball gods, small g, this doesn't happen. Uh, But if Northern Kentucky were to sweep Youngstown State, uh, you would be looking at a three-game lead for Northern Kentucky. You'd be a three-game lead for Northern Kentucky. So uh, it's an important series. Make no mistake about that. Uh, breaking news, uh, James Conner has found a home, and it's not going to be Pittsburgh. The Steelers, a former Steelers running back, just signed a contract with the Arizona Cardinals. Uh, so uh, he is now leaving Pittsburgh. He was a free agent at the end of the year. Uh, James Conner uh, is leaving Pittsburgh. Uh, he has signed a free agency deal with the Arizona Cardinals. Uh, so the Steelers, uh, right now, you got Benny Snell. Uh, you're probably going to be going uh, fishing for a running back uh, in day two, maybe day three of the NFL draft. Uh, but James Conner is now an Arizona Cardinal as he signs a contract with the Arizona Cardinals. So uh, Steelers are... Uh, no doubt, going to be taking a running back. I, I don't think they take a running back early, early, early on. I think the first round pick uh, is is going to be uh, in another direction. But uh, you could very well see a uh, a second day acquisition or possibly a third day because the third third through seventh rounds. Um, oh, hang on a second. Is it the third through the seventh, or is it just the? Uh, second and third on on the second day and the fourth through the seventh on the third day regardless somewhere around round three or four uh the Steelers will probably address the running back situation and then again maybe they fall in love with ATN out of Clemson and grab him in the first round who knows but uh Steelers will now need a running back uh to go along with Benny Snell as James Conner has signed a deal with the Arizona Cardinals. All right, here's your uh, schedule for today on the network. Uh, DJ will be out in uh, suburban Newcastle uh, as Mohawk will be welcoming in New Brighton. Uh, New Brighton goes to Mohawk. That game starts at 415. You got the Holy War Baseball Edition at Scene Park this afternoon at 430. Ursland takes on Cardinal Mooney. Uh, it's a home game for Cardinal Mooney. Be honest, both teams call the uh, uh, Scene Park home. Uh, so technically it's a home game for Cardinal Mooney. Both teams know Scene Park uh, very well. It's their home field. Uh, so Mooney will take on Ursland. Mooney will be the home team in round one of the Holy War Baseball Edition. Uh, LeBray will be playing Newton Falls at LeBray High School. This is a doubleheader uh, at LeBray at their uh, beautiful K-12 through complex uh, over in Levittsburg. Uh, Austin Town Fitch will welcome in Howland in, uh, to uh, play softball. Uh, this coming off the heels of a 22-3 to victory over Howland yesterday. Uh, the Falcons scored 17 runs in the third inning. This is probably the most impressive statistic. Run differential has become the uh, uh, the big thing for whatever reason. The Fitch Falcons are 5-1 and one this year in softball. In their six games, 
They have scored 75 runs. 75. They are averaging 12 and a half runs per game. They're averaging 12 and a half runs per game. Here's the kicker. They're averaging a tick under two runs for the opposition. The opponents are not even getting two runs a game. Falcons have only given up 11 runs this year in their six games. That is a run differential of plus 64. Plus 64. So if you add all of this up, 64 divided by 6, the Falcons are winning on an average of close to 11 runs per game. And and we're including the one loss that they had. They have a run differential of plus 64 over six games. That is absolutely crazy good. That is just some crazy, crazy good numbers. Uh, So Fitch will be looking for their sixth victory of the season. They play Howland back at Fitch High School. Uh, That will start at 5 o'clock. Uh, Boardman High School has a track meet. That game, or that meet, I should say, starts at 5 o'clock. Canfield boys will be playing Warren Harding at Canfield High School. That is a baseball game that gets underway at 5 o'clock. We'll have it for you on YSNlive.com. McDonald is to- hosting Springfield in baseball. That gets underway at 5 o'clock. Also getting underway at 5 o'clock today uh, at the beautiful complex on State Route 46, Over at South Range, the South Range boys and girls will be in action. The girls uh, will be playing Poland in softball. The boys will be playing Poland in baseball. It's a huge NE8 contest, uh, both softball and baseball. Uh, Both games will get underway at 5 o'clock this afternoon at the beautiful complex on State Route 46. Uh, For those of you wondering, that complex is across the street from the gorgeous football facility uh, at South Range High School. Uh, So if you're traveling north, heading from Columbiana, traveling north to Canfield, you cannot possibly miss it. You're on State Route 46. Uh, You will go past the four-way stop sign. Uh, The school is going to be on the left-hand side. The complex is going to be on the left-hand side. You'd have to be absolutely out of your mind, blind, or not paying attention to miss the complex. It's absolutely gorgeous. Uh, Struthers will be hosting Jefferson at Struthers High School in a baseball game. That gets underway at 5 o'clock. And then tonight, under the lights, the Austin Town Fitch baseball team will take on Howland. Falcons got a 6 nothing victory last night as they shut out Howland last night. Uh, Austin Town Fitch having themselves a really good uh, season to this point. Uh, not only the uh, softball team, the baseball team is having a really good season uh, to this point as well. Uh, Fitch will take on Howland uh, in a uh, All-American Conference red tier matchup uh, tonight from Fitch High School. Again, yesterday, Fitch beat Howland. They shut him out 6 to nothing, uh, looking for another victory. Uh, their main competition right now would be the Canfield Cardinals. Uh, Canfield is playing Harding. Uh, if you're looking to go see uh, you know, a solid uh, baseball game, plenty of games on the schedule that are, are worthy of going. That mooney Ursland game is going to be all kinds of fun. Uh, Mohawk and New Brighton, uh, and, and we want to uh, continue to uh, – uh, thank the the uh, good folks at Mohawk High School. Which, uh, if you're if you're not familiar with Newcastle, Newcastle has uh, the uh, the high school for the city, uh, Newcastle High School, which is one of the bigger uh, high schools, uh, if not the biggest high school in Lawrence County. And then around the metropolitan Newcastle area, you have about four or five. Um, schools that aren't as big as Newcastle. Mohawk, Shenango, Newcastle Union, Nishanik, uh, and I know I'm missing uh, a school. Uh, But those four, uh, off the top of my head, Mohawk, Nishanik, Newcastle Union, uh, Shenango, uh, those four 
are on the outskirts of Newcastle, uh, and they uh, they have their own school districts. Uh, kudos to Mohawk for uh, signing up with YSN, and uh, DJ's having a blast doing their games uh, from Mohawk High School. Today, they're going to be taking on New Brighton, uh, and that game will be heard uh, this and seen this afternoon at 4.15. All right, coming up at the top of the hour, we will hear from Dan Bertolini. Uh, he is the skipper of the YSU uh, Baseball Penguins. Penguins split with Milwaukee over the weekend. They took uh, a doubleheader on Friday, lost single games on Saturday and Sunday. Uh, back where they started, uh, they began the weekend one game in back of Milwaukee in third place in the Horizon League. They end the weekend... One game in back of Milwaukee, third place in the Horizon League. Uh, Penguins have a one-game lead on fourth place Northern Kentucky and a two-game lead on fifth place UIC. So this is a huge weekend for the Penguins uh, in hopes that they can separate themselves uh, from Northern Kentucky. Not only that, uh, hoping that UIC... Uh, is going to get cooled off a little bit uh, as UIC will be taking on Purdue Fort Wayne, the Mastodons, who were not in action uh, last weekend as they had their they had their uh, series with Wright State canceled because Wright State has a COVID issue. Uh, so uh, Purdue Fort Wayne, two weeks to prepare for UIC, maybe a little bit of. Uh, little bit of uh, some staleness with Purdue Ford Wayne. We'll see what happens uh, as the Mastodons are going to travel to the Windy City to take on UIC. And again, uh, that's that's a big series uh, and a series that Youngstown State is definitely going to have to look at because the reality is UIC is 9 and 11, just two games in back of YSU uh, for the third spot in the Horizon League standings. Uh, so right now, the Penguins, if the playoffs were to start today, Penguins would be in good shape. They would get the third seed in the conference as they would wind up playing Milwaukee uh, if, the, uh, if the season were to end right now. Wright State would be playing Northern Kentucky. Milwaukee would be playing Youngstown State. But uh, the season does not end right now. The season is still uh, a ways away from ending. So uh, Penguins are going to have to uh, continue to uh, to do some uh, yeoman's work. And again, at the very least, you split at home and then you dominate. Uh, I'm sorry, you split on the road and you dominate at home. And if the Penguins can continue to do that, well, they'll finish in the top four and get themselves... A, uh, a spot in the Horizon League tournament. And that's that's all we're hoping for. Uh, you know, get an opportunity to have a spot in the Horizon League tournament. And uh, much like the tournament Youngstown State's women's bowling team was in, in the Final Four, uh, it would be a double elimination, uh, four-team events where the top seed would play the four seed, the two would play the three and uh, essentially, if you won two games, you would be sitting pretty because you would be the only undefeated team. And then whoever comes out of the loser's bracket would have to beat you two times in order to claim the league championship and the automatic berth into the NCAA tournament. So this is... Uh, it's it's imperative for the Penguins to become one of those four teams because, you know, unfortunately, the fifth, sixth, and seventh place teams in this seven-team league, they don't go to the postseason. And as I've mentioned, right now, uh, the Penguins are two games in front of the fifth-place UIC team. Now, the good news is, uh, the Penguins beat UIC three out of four from Eastwood Field. Uh, so right now, they have the tiebreaker. Now, these two teams will play each other in Chicago in a few weeks. 
and UIC will be given an opportunity to see if they can get a little bit of revenge. Uh, but as long as the Penguins were to split the season, uh, split the series in Chicago with UIC, then the Penguins would have a tiebreaker, which would be huge because if the tournament was to come down to YSU and UIC and one of these teams is in and one of these teams is out, if the Penguins were to win the season series, they would be the team that gets in. So winning the head-to-head uh, is extremely important. Winning the season series head-to-head is extremely important so the Penguins can get uh, the tiebreaker. Right now, they have the tiebreaker on UIC. Uh, the only team, uh, as of right now, and I, I want to make sure that I'm right on this, uh, the only team right now, other than Wright State, uh, that the Penguins do not have uh, the tiebreaker in terms of head-to-head because the Penguins went 3-5 and five against Wright State. They went 3-1 and one in Youngstown, but 0-4 oh in Dayton. Uh, so the Penguins finished the season series 3-5 and five against Wright State. They're 3-1 and one against UIC. They're 2-2 two and two against Milwaukee. So other than um, – and, and they're 3-1 and one against Purdue-Fort Wayne. So other than Wright State, Milwaukee's the only other team uh, in which the Penguins do not have uh, the tiebreaker uh, right now. Uh, the Penguins play Northern Kentucky four times this weekend. Uh, as I look at the schedule, they're not playing Northern Kentucky at Eastwood Field. So this is it. If the Penguins want to get the tiebreaker uh, from Northern Kentucky, they're going to need to take three out of four uh, from Northern Kentucky in order to get the tiebreaker. Because if the two teams finish in a tie, the tiebreaker is head-to-head. And unfortunately, the Penguins uh, will not be playing Northern Kentucky eight times this season. They're only playing them four times. So... Hopefully the Penguins will be able to take three out of four, thus get the head-to-head against Northern Kentucky. Uh, The the Penguins split with Milwaukee, but they will be playing Milwaukee uh, four more times, the final four games of the regular season. A single game on Friday, the 21st of May, doubleheader on Saturday, uh, the 22nd of May, and a single game to close out the season on uh, Sunday, May the 23rd. Uh, so the Penguins have an opportunity to get a home or to uh, get a tiebreaker advantage uh, when they play Milwaukee in about a month or so to close out the uh, 2021 uh, regular season uh, in this what has turned out to be a fantastic uh, baseball season to this point. Uh, Penguins currently 11 and nine in the Horizon League, 16 and 15 overall riding a two-game losing streak as they drop the final two games of the series to Milwaukee. Uh, again, the Penguins taking on the Norse from Northern Kentucky. They're 10-10 and 10 in Horizon League play, 12-15 and 15 overall, riding a two-game winning streak as they won the final two games of their series against um, Purdue Ford, or, I'm sorry, against UIC. Uh, UIC is 9-11, and 10-16 and 16 overall, riding a two-game losing streak. And again, Wright State is atop the division. Uh, They are going to miss their second consecutive weekend uh, as they had COVID issues. So they're down again this weekend uh, as they were to have played Oakland this week. Uh, They are 13-3 in the conference, 13-8 overall. Uh, Wright State will be back at it, uh, not this weekend, but the following weekend as they take on uh, Northern Kentucky. So be interesting to see what happens for sure. All right, we're going to take a timeout. On the other side, we will uh, hopefully bring up the manager of the YSU Baseball Penguins, Dan Bertolini. He's coming up in just a bit. It's a Tuesday edition of Running Point presented by Greenwood Chevrolet on Mahoning Avenue in Austintown. Back in a bit. Quality, customer service, and integrity. Those are the four words that have driven our success since 1957 at Joe Dickey Electric. 
Joe Dickey Electric is one Mahoning Valley landmark business that stays current with the requirements of our customers. Family owned and managed, we are an electrical contractor and energy solutions provider. Every member of our team adds to his or her skill set through ongoing training. Residential, commercial, industrial, automotive, and more. We keep ahead of the needs of our customers with a fleet of more than 50 vehicles and 24-7 emergency service, so you're never left in the dark. The 4M company, being an architect and construction manager for over 40 years, has had the opportunity to use many different electrical businesses for our projects. The depth, quality, and knowledge and attention to detail displayed by Dickey Electric makes them stand out above all the rest. For state-of-the-art expertise and a timeless commitment to our customers, contact Joe Dickey Electric. We are everything electrical. News doesn't stop after the sun goes down. Sometimes you just have to hustle to get it. At 21 News, no matter how far it is, no matter what it takes to get there, we're working to bring you the best stories and the freshest content at 11 p.m. with the context and clarity that makes it worth staying up for no matter what time it is. 21 News at 11 with me, Aaron Simonek and Derek Steyer. 21 News at 11, news that's worth your time. When looking for home design inspiration, don't just be inspired, be Baird inspired. Whether new or remodeling, Baird Brothers has the latest trends like shiplap to refresh your home. Go from inspiration to installation with our wide selection of in-stock American hardwoods. From the rustic charm of antique oak to the warmth of traditional cherry, Baird Brothers has what you need to make your home inspiring. Baird Brothers, our family's heritage, your family's home. Hello, I'm Greg Burbick with G. Burbick Farms. For the last hundred years, my family has farmed in Columbiana and Mahoning counties. I began raising cattle in 1996 with the goal of providing a better product for you and your family on the dinner table. Our grass-fed and grain-supplemented black Angus beef were raised with no hormones, steroids, or antibiotics. We are known for our hometown-friendly service and incredible tasting products. We are locally owned and have customers across the tri-state area. Our products go from our farm to your family. Stop by our farm on New Buffalo Road or visit us on the web at gburbickfarms.com. Don't forget to like us on Facebook. G. Burbick Farms, it just tastes better. This is Tommy Clem, owner of WRS Insurance Solutions. WRS Insurance Solutions is a local independent agency that specializes in life, Medicare, long-term care, and disability products. Call us at 330-953-3722 or visit us at wrsinsurancesolutions.com to learn more. Good luck to all the student athletes in the Valley. Right now is a great time to get more for your trade-in at Tri-State Ford and drive home in a new or pre-owned vehicle. Choose from our great selection of new Ford models or pre-owned vehicles. Plus, get the Tri-State Ford Advantage, including a 10-year, 200,000-mile warranty and more. At Tri-State Ford, we'll pay you top dollar for your trade, but you don't have to purchase one of ours to sell us yours. Customer focus, community driven. Tri-State Ford East Liverpool or visit TriStateFord.net. When looking for home design inspiration, don't just be inspired, be Baird inspired. Whether new or remodeling, Baird Brothers has the latest trends like shiplap to refresh your home. Go from inspiration to installation with our wide selection of in-stock American hardwoods. From the rustic charm of antique oak to the warmth of traditional cherry, Baird Brothers has what you need to make your home inspiring. Baird Brothers, our family's heritage, your family's home. Jimmy Sutman here, director of Isle, Purple Cat, and Golden String. We are happy to support YSN and two of my favorite people, Scotty Mincher and Super Dave O'Malley. We are an agency that provides services for adults with disabilities. We infuse humor, passion, and joy into their lives. If you know of any folks with disabilities that need our assistance, please contact us.
Welcome back to a Tuesday edition of Running Point presented by Greenwood Chevrolet on Mahoning Avenue in Austin Town. Penguins uh, going to be opening up a series down in Highland Heights, Kentucky this weekend against Northern Kentucky. Coming off a weekend in which the YSU Baseball Penguins split a series with Milwaukee. And to talk about that and so much more, we bring in the skipper of the YSU Baseball Program, Dan Bertolini. Dan, how are you today, sir? I'm doing just fine. All right, so I, I'm as greedy as you are when it comes to uh, when it comes to putting games in the W column. And when I saw that the Penguins had won uh, the first two games of this series, I thought, okay, uh, let's let's get at least one more and and hopefully uh, get out of Milwaukee winning the series. Uh, but give Milwaukee their props. They uh, they came with their bats uh, ready to go in games three and four. Yeah, I mean, really, our, our starting pitching pitched incredibly well this weekend. Um, you know, played two hard fought games on on uh, on Friday, and uh, with the weather, that, that kind of got changed. And on Saturday, uh, our starter John Snyder he pitched. I mean, he was he was about as electric as he's been all year. And and about the fifth inning, he got hit with a line drive, and it kind of he kind of changed it a little bit, gave up two runs that inning. And then, um, you know, we, we still had leads late in both games with, uh, you know, some of our, 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 our most reliable best guys out of the bullpen and just, you know, give Milwaukee a lot of credit. They found ways to, um, you know, they found ways to score some runs when, when they hadn't swung the bats tremendously well all weekend. And, and um, you know, sometimes that's just baseball. It's a game of momentum, and they just kind of captured it a little bit, you know, late in both of those games. Is John Snyder okay? Uh, did did he suffer any uh, any injury that that's going to uh, be prolonged, Coach? No, miraculously, I don't know how it happened, but he got hit about as square as you could get hit in his pitching hand. And um, uh, you know, God's grace, he uh, he he was able to to keep, continue pitching, and then uh, pitch. I think he pitched into the seventh inning, and um, you know, I, I thought he was going to be super sore, you know, moving forward, and he's. He's perfectly fine, so thank goodness for that because that would have been a you know, devastating loss the way he's thrown the ball this year. Well, speaking of pitching, uh, another week goes by, another week of uh, of an honor for Colin Floyd, once again a national top 30 pitcher uh, for his performance in a seven-inning complete game, one run, five hits, 12 strikeouts, got his fifth win of the season in the Penguins' 2-1 victory over Milwaukee. Uh, he now has uh, the most strikeouts, and he has 50 career starts. Uh, both are all-time records. Uh, he is uh, second among all active Division I players in in those two categories. Skip, this kid has been absolutely phenomenal, not just this year, his entire career at Youngstown State. Yeah, absolutely. I think uh, I think just re- just now they they just announced the Rising League Pitcher of the Week and he got it now for the third uh, week and back to back weeks um, or two out of three should have got it last week too in my opinion but they were tired of giving him the award um, but uh, he's just been he's been incredible um, he's been everything you could ask for from you know we had just run out of good things to say about him so uh, when he's on the mound he gives us a great opportunity to win. He really set the tone for the weekend. I thought, you know, Colin Clark really fed off that energy um, going into the second game. I think we struck 15 guys out um, in the second game. Clark struck out eight of the first nine hitters in game two of the doubleheader. So um, our starting pitching was dominant, and uh, you know, Floyd set that tone there uh, uh, yesterday in the, in the or I'm sorry, Friday in the seventh inning game. Well, Turner Graw, uh, two uh, triples, uh, which tied a single game school record. Uh, second player since 1988 to triple two times in one game. Uh, he did that in uh, Sunday's game in which the uh, Penguins lost to Milwaukee 12 to eight in 10 innings. Yeah, he was, I mean, he's been, you know, he's, he's a special, special player. You know, he's still young and raw and figuring things out, but, uh, he's had a great start to the season. I mean, he's, yeah, he's a special talent that uh, I think at some point in his career he'll have an opportunity to play at the professional level. And, um, you know, just raw power can go both ways with it. Both of his triples were, were um, you know, we had one to the right center field gap, one off the left field wall. So um, he can swing it, you know, really 
uh, he's dangerous in any count, and um, he's been really good for us uh, all year. Skip, let's talk about some of these other kids that uh, that make up the uh, the everyday lineup. I mean, Jeff Whaler at the top of the lineup. I I saw he went two for five in the uh, in the extra inning loss, and uh, he uh, he ignites the uh, the fire in the top of the lineup. And then you get uh, your your holdovers that do really well, the Lucas Nisantes and the uh, Dominic Buckos, and uh, you know this up and down the lineup, uh, uh, Desenio. Uh, the O'Shaughnessy brothers, up and down, you've got some really talented kids swinging the lumber this year. Yeah, this this has been you know really a complete offense. I think we're leading the Horizon League in stolen bases. We're leading the Horizon League in hits. Um, you know, we uh, we have guys that can hit for power. We have guys that hit for average. It's really pretty balanced, and there's really not a hole. Um, you know, really not a hole in our lineup. I thought. You know, Lucas had a great weekend. Jeff probably, you know, he didn't get it, but he could have very easily been a uh, Horizon League player of the week. But I think he had eight hits this weekend, a homer, a couple doubles, a bunch of RBIs. He had a great weekend for us. Uh, you know, Phil Glasser has been incredible. Uh, you know, really you can go up and down. Don Buckos had a great season. He, had, he kind of started slow, but really kind of picked it up. Blaze had a really good game. He's battling a little bit of an injury. Um, that kept him out of the lineup on Sunday, but he, um, you know, he had a great game in Game Three. I think he had three. I think he was three for three for four. So really, anywhere in the lineup, he can hurt you. And I think even Sunday, despite the loss, we had 15 hits. I think, and um, you know, we left 12 guys on base. So if we can find a way to kind of continue to add to those leads, um, this offense does a great job of giving us a chance to win most games. I know that you uh, you rely so much on Nick Caruso and, and his defensive abilities behind the plate, but you know here's a kid that's hitting 300 on the dot, two homers, 19 RBI. Uh, we're looking at just 80 at bats on the campaign. Uh, this kid has done a whole lot more than just uh, call a great game for the Penguins and and manage your pitching staff. He's he's turning himself into quite a really good offensive threat for you as well. Yeah, he's he. I mean, he's really. A- He's the catalyst. I mean, you hate to say it, but when you're in the seven or eight hole, but you know he comes up in a lot of big situations. You feel great when he's out. The he's going to give you a quality at bat every time he's up there. Uh, he's had a couple home runs this year. He's found you know some gaps. He's been able to. He's you know he's very good with runners in scoring position, being able to cash those guys in. I think he's what second on the team or somewhere in that area, second or third in RBIs. We have a lot of guys on our team. I think now we have 10 guys with double-digit RBIs, so um, there's a lot of guys that can hurt you. But him and Lucas have done a great job at the bottom of our lineup. Skip, that's one of the reasons why I'm so high on this offense. As you just mentioned, there's there's a number of guys that can beat you, a number of guys. And, and we're looking at kids that haven't even gotten 100 at-bats yet. Uh, a lot of these kids are double digits in RBIs. Uh, that just tells me that any place, any time in this batting order – this team can do some damage. Yeah, and it really, most of this has changed since the first time we played Wright State. I mean, they they really, they really kind of emphasized and, and kind of, you know, just showed a little bit of where we were at as an offense with a little bit of our weakness. We're chasing a lot of pitches out of the zone. We weren't staying disciplined, and, and just you know, we're we're just we just were in a little bit of a funk at that point. And really, since that weekend. Um, We've found ways. We, you know, made some adjustments in practice. Smitty and, and Coach Pinnell, they do a great job of working with our hitters and kind of going through some things and changed what we were doing. And, and you've seen the, the product. There's been quality at bats. We've had hits all the way up and down the lineup. Lots of, you know, double-digit hit totals in games. And um, over the long course of the season, and we've played a tough schedule on the horizon. We've played, you know, the, the top-end teams uh, the last four or five weeks. And, um, you know, I think we've done a good job offensively. So uh, we got to continue that this weekend against Northern Kentucky. And, um, you know, that's going to be a tough place to play. There's a lot of runs that get scored there. It's a small ballpark where the ball flies. So going to have to continue that uh, approach into this weekend. Team is hitting 284 as a club. And uh, one of the things that I absolutely love about this team, the, the on-base percentage uh, as a team, the on-base percentage is 363 uh, which which is fantastic, uh, and and we're stealing bags as well. Forty three bags stolen. Uh, you've only been caught seventeen times all year long. That's that's a uh, that's a solid recipe for 
uh, for a team that loves to run, uh, loves to uh, uh, get the uh, get the traffic running on the base paths, and um, yeah, this is offensively. You guys are you guys are playing as good a baseball uh, as I've seen in the in the last couple of years, at least offensively. Yeah, it's uh, it's special to watch at times. I mean, when it gets rolling, it's it's really hard to stop us. We put a lot of pressure on teams just with stolen bases and bunts, and you know we scored a run, a hustle play uh, in the game on Sunday, where ground ball up the middle with two outs, runner on second, ground ball up the middle. Their guy kind of slides, dives, tries to throw our guy out. We beat the throw out, and our guy scores from second base. You know, never stopping. So, um, you know, this this group's bought in. They they play hard. They run the bases really hard um and and i think that helps us lead to a lot of our offense because they have to constantly be worried about you know the pitchers have to constantly worry about holding our guys um you know they don't want to get balls in the dirt because we'll, we'll be able to take extra bases and you know provided some opportunities for some of our guys to maybe get some better pitches um because of that so we've executed some hit and runs we've executed some slashes so you know hopefully we'll be able to continue that um, but if we can keep that pressure on it it does make it really difficult for opposing pitchers to, to pitch against our offense. Dan Bertolini, he's the manager of the YSU baseball program. He joins me on the MP Vivo heating and air conditioning hotline. Skip, I made mention uh, during the show today the, the just the, the very bunched up uh, standings in the Horizon League. And, uh, you know, Wright State's not going to be playing again this week with their COVID issues, but you, you figure they're going to be one of the four teams into the postseason. Uh, so you got Milwaukee. Youngstown State, Northern Kentucky, and UIC, and all four of these teams are up and down, separated by just three games. And and these four teams are going to be seeing a whole lot of each other uh, between now and the end of this season. This is this is going to be a Donnybrook of a fight to see who uh, who goes into the postseason. Yeah, every week is going to be difficult. I mean, right State's going to be really hard to catch them just with the amount of games they've played and. Um, kind of the start that they had without, you know, really playing games the last two Horizon League weekends, you know, last weekend and this weekend. It's going to be really hard to, you know, they'd have to go on a pretty bad stretch there for anyone to be able to catch them. So, you know, we you know, at the end of the day, um, every game in the Horizon League is important. And, um, you know, this there's no more important weekend than this weekend is, you know, going to get an opportunity to play a team that's, within striking distance of us and, and trying to really, um, you know, lengthen our lead uh, in the in the, in the the horizon league to, to ensure ourselves a, an opportunity in the conference tournament. Yeah, let's talk a little bit about Northern Kentucky. Uh, and, and, again, Youngstown State is going to have to go to a uh, to a team that has turf. And, and it's easy for the teams that play on a dirt complex or a dirt stadium to uh, to make the change from dirt to artificial turf. That's not that big of a deal. Uh, I think it's a bigger deal for a team that plays their home games on turf uh, to go back into playing on the dirt. So I don't think this uh, comes into play this week. But give a quick scouting report on Northern Kentucky. What are some of their strengths, Skip? Well, they're gonna they're gonna swing it and they're gonna swing for they're gonna swing for for the fences. I mean, they uh, they had they can definitely do some damage with the baseball. Griffin Dorshing is, is as good of a power hitter that's been in the Horizon League that I've ever seen. Um, I think he won the NCAA College uh, home run derby at the uh, at the national championships uh, two two season 2019. So I mean he has some serious power. I think he's got 10 home runs. Uh, he's really changed his body. He looks he looks great from the film that I've seen. So you know he's a he's a force to be reckoned with. Anytime he's got a got a bat in his hands, you got to be you know you got to be careful because he can do damage with it, especially at their ballpark. It's it's pretty small and the and the wind blows out. Um, if you look at some of the scores that that happen at at, uh, at Northern Kentucky, there's some high scoring affairs. So um, you know they you know uh, Andrew Bacon's been a guy that's been there. I think this is his fifth year. Um, he's uh you know he's done a done a great job. He's a very dangerous hitter. Uh, Colin Luddy, the shortstop's a good player. So you know they got two or three guys in their lineup that can that can do some damage. Um, you know, from a pitching standpoint, they have some talented arms. They haven't really – doesn't seem like they've been able to put it together. Um, you know, they've given up a lot of hits and a lot of runs. But they have some guys that can shut you down. So um, they got a freshman, Ben Girl, on the mound. He's a, he's, a, he's a left-hander that has given some guys some fits this year. Um, 
they have uh, Noah Richardson. I think he struck out 14 or 15 in a game in the Horizon League this year. So, um, you know, they have some guys. I think if you can get into their bullpen a little bit, um, you know, that could be the best chance to score some runs. I think they're pitching to like an eight and a half ERA. So, you know, we our guys have to be patient, uh, get good pitches to hit, and do some damage when we have those opportunities. But they're fielding at a high level. I think they they're leading. I think the Horizon League in fielding percentage. So they don't make a ton of errors. Um, so you know, we're gonna have to be disciplined. We're gonna have to earn our hits. It's interesting that Northern Kentucky is not going to make a return trip to Eastwood Field this year. Uh, you only play Northern Kentucky four times, and uh, this is the one team that you'd want to be able to play more than four times, I'd imagine. Yeah, I don't understand. <laughs> if you had to tell me how, how does the Horizon League come up with a schedule, I have no idea. Uh, we play the furthest team away from us twice uh, in Milwaukee, so I don't know how that happens, and we play the, the closest team to us in Wright State uh, twice, and, and Northern Kentucky is a close second, and we play them once. So I'm not sure how that worked out, but, um, but yeah, I mean, it's, uh, it's a team that, you know, anytime that you're playing a team that's close to you uh, in the standings, too, you want to have an opportunity to be able to win those games and, and uh, at least, you know, play each other for an opportunity to win those games. I don't understand why everyone's not playing each other eight times. You play four games in the one facility. They come to you for four games. Uh, Seven teams in the league, so you'd play eight games against the other six teams in your league. 48 league games. Why can't we do that? There's not enough weeks. Um, Gotcha. You would would have to start the season too early, and the weather just wouldn't be cooperative in a lot of those places, whether it's you know, even here, like you're, you're probably not playing in February, uh, most likely in a Horizon League game. So that's why that was the best schedule we could put together to play the most amount of conference games and still have a couple non-conference weekends. And, and regardless, it's hard with the buy the buy series too. It's just a very strange with seven teams. It does make the scheduling a lot harder. Dan Bertolini joining me, and I get an education here in the in the grand scheme of it all. Uh, Dan Bertolini joining me on the MP Vivo Heating and Air Conditioning Hotline. And, you know, given the tiebreaker scenario, uh, which is head-to-head, these four games are, are pretty huge. Northern Kentucky is one of five teams that's going to be, in all likelihood, trying to get one of those four spots. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's uh, like I said, every every week the rest of the way is, is huge. Um, when you don't have any any midweeks, every every game is the conference game, and it's going to be a dogfight to the finish to see who who plays, um, you know, who makes the final four. I feel good with the way where we where we've been, um, and kind of the way we're playing. We played, you know, we made one air all weekend last weekend, so we played great defense. I think our bullpen will do a much better job. Um, you know, being able to close some of those games out, uh, as long as our starting pitching stays where it's at, I think we have a good opportunity. And, um, you know, we're going to have to play good baseball uh, the last, uh, you know, six weeks of the season. Dan, run us down the uh, pitching uh, duels and uh, how you're uh, putting your rotation together for the weekend. Yeah, Colin Clark will start on Friday. Colin Floyd will start the first game Saturday. John Snyder will throw um, the second game on Saturday. And then freshman Nick Perez will get the ball on Sunday. All right, and the uh, first game of the doubleheader is the seven-inning affair, which is uh, perfect for Colin Floyd. He normally gives you the complete game. Uh, You shut your bullpen down for that one game, giving you a really good advantage uh, to have a mix and match in your bullpen if one of the pitchers on second game of the uh, of the doubleheader on Saturday or uh, the Sunday, if things go sideways, your bullpen will be fresh. Yeah, absolutely, and Colin, Colin Clark's given us a lot of good starts, so he gives us a great shot to win on Friday, and then you can use your bullpen wisely there. And then hopefully, if, if Colin continues to pitch the way he's done, you know he gives us some relief there, and um, not having to use the bullpen, and then being able to piece it together for Saturday and Sunday, um, and it's worked out, you know, for the most part, pretty well for us. Hey, Skip, all the best this weekend down in Highland Heights, and hopefully we're talking next week with the Penguins taking at least three. I'll be greedy. Let's sweep these guys and uh, and get out of there on a happy note. That sounds like a plan. I'm going to start with, with game number one, and we'll go from there, but 
hopefully we'll have some good things to talk about next weekend. Yeah, one game at a time, but uh, the, the the bar is set pretty high, so let's uh, let's deliver the goods. All, all the best to you, Skip. Thanks a lot. You got it. Dan Bertolini, the manager of the YSU baseball team. We'll take a timeout, be back with more. It is a Tuesday edition of Running Point on YSNlive.com. Your teams work hard and give it all they've got. Well, so does ours, because 21 Sports and YSN give you extra effort when covering local sports. 21 Sports and YSN, winning coverage of our Valley's teams. No matter what the weather, be prepared with a reliable, efficient, rude gas furnace or air conditioner from MP Vivo Heating and Air Conditioning. Call your energy efficient expert, MP Vivo, today for a free estimate. Here at MP Vivo, we rely on rude, and so should you. Myers Family Insurance knows the importance of a great team. Our team continues to grow to help you with your Medicare and retirement needs. The annual election period is October 15th through December 7th. Now's the time to make sure your plan continues to meet your needs for the upcoming year. Call today. It's storm season. I think we're under the gun for some heavy storms over the next couple of hours. And Storm Tracker 21 is ready. This is probably the one we're keeping a closer eye on. On air. And locally, we're going to have a lot of eyes on our area. Online. All right, let's talk high-risk future cast and the timing of this weather. On social media and on our app. Notice we'll have scattered showers on Thursday. Stay ready with Storm Trucker 21. The severe weather threat now through around sunset. Your first and last stop with your tax return should be with me, Tracy Bryden at Greenwood Chevrolet in Austintown. No other dealer goes the extra mile to bring you the largest selection of vehicles at one convenient location. With guaranteed credit approval, I will find you the right vehicle and the right financing options for you. I am ready to go the extra mile to show you why no other dealer sells more cars, finances more, and gets you more for your refund than Greenwood Chevrolet in Austintown. Welcome back to a Thursday or to a uh, Tuesday edition of Running Point presented by Greenwood Chevrolet on Mahoning Avenue in Austin Town. Ron Pochester with you. Coming up at the bottom of the hour, Eric Fender will be joining the show. He is expected to be named the new boys basketball coach at Poland High School. Uh, Eric Fender, longtime assistant uh, to the now retired. Uh, former head basketball coach at Poland High School, Ken Grisdale. Uh, so uh, pending board approval, uh, which is coming up two weeks from yesterday, April the 26th, that is their uh, board meeting, Poland's board meeting. Uh, they're expected to approve uh, Eric Fender as the new boys basketball coach at Poland High School. He's going to be calling in today. We'll talk some Poland uh, Bulldogs uh, basketball as Coach Fender will uh, be roaming the sidelines. Uh, <laughs> and it, it'll be weird not seeing uh, Coach Grisdale uh, as, the, uh, as the head b basketball coach at Poland. Uh, but his longtime assistant, Eric Fender, is about to uh, get that job. Uh, there are some other positions that are uh, going to be filled. We, um, we made mention that uh, um, the uh, Letonia Bears are going to have uh, a, a new uh, basketball coach. Guy Costello uh, is going to be the new uh, head basketball coach at Letonia pending their uh, approval. Um, he had been there before. Uh, I want to say, oh boy, about 10 years ago, um, uh, Guy Costello was the head basketball coach at Letonia. So uh, this will be his second go around. Uh, as the uh, head basketball coach at Letonia, and we'll see what uh, what uh, Coach Costello does uh, with that program. 
Uh, there are some, uh, some vacancies that are uh, certainly going to have to be filled. Sebring uh, looking for a brand-new uh, head basketball coach. Uh, Brian Clark left uh, Sebring. Uh, coach French is not in Springfield anymore. So, uh, you know, there's uh, an opening there. And that's <laughs> uh, year in, year out. Tigers have a tremendous basketball program. I'll be very curious to see uh, what happens there. And then, of course, um, uh, news was breaking that Western Reserve uh, is going to be looking for a new basketball coach. So there's certainly some uh, positions that need to be filled, and uh, it's going to be very interesting to see uh, who goes where in the uh, in, in the high school uh, basketball um, carousel. Uh, we see this every year with high school football. Uh, we had a, a number of uh, a number of schools that were looking for a brand new football coach, and we uh, we got all that taken care of. Now uh, basketball uh, is starting to um, fill some holes in terms of who is going to be uh, going where uh, when the 2021-2022 campaign gets underway uh, about November of this year, and. You know, fingers crossed, knock on wood, hopefully we don't have to worry about COVID concerns and all that other rigmarole uh, and just have uh, people uh, going into the gym and just packed gymnasiums watching high school basketball and, and for that matter, all of the sports uh, next school year. Hopefully, uh, when we uh, get the uh, football season started in August, hopefully uh, we'll have packed stadiums to, uh, to watch high school football when we uh, start the football season on August the 20th. And for those that are uh, patiently waiting uh, the uh, high school football, let me uh, do some quick arithmetic here. Uh, 10, 15, 16, 17, 18 weeks from Friday. Actually, 18 weeks from Thursday because you know uh, there will be some Thursday games uh, on the docket in the Mahoning Valley. In 18 weeks, yeah, I know it seems like a long time, uh, but in 18 weeks, high school football is, uh, is back at it again. On uh, Thursday, August the 19th, uh, we will have high school football, uh, barring any uh, disasters. Uh, that's in 18 weeks. So uh, it's <laughs> it, it'll come before you know it. Believe me when I tell you. It's, uh, summer will uh, fly by, and unfortunately it will because that's my favorite part of the year. But uh, uh, it'll fly by, and before you know it, we'll be back run rip-roaring and ready to go with – high school football and and uh, with football comes uh you know the not too distant future we'll have basketball as well so uh we will certainly uh, hear from the new boys basketball coach board uh, a board pending approval uh Eric Fender to take over the boys basketball job at Poland he'll join the show in a couple of minutes to talk some Poland Bulldogs basketball we made mention uh, we do have plenty of games on the network uh, today and this evening, the uh, the, the first game uh, is going to be a, a four fifteen or a four thirty game. Let me uh, pull up the schedule here. Uh, I believe it's a four fifteen game uh, on the outskirts of Newcastle, Pennsylvania, where Mohawk will be welcoming in New Brighton. That's a four fifteen game from Mohawk High School. Uh, The Holy War Part 1 in baseball, Cardinal Mooney hosting Ursland. Uh, At 4.30 today up in LeBray, LeBray will host Newton Falls in a doubleheader. Uh, 5 o'clock, these are your games. Softball game at 5 o'clock between Fitch and Howland at Austintown Fitch. Uh, Boardman track meets, that will be taking place starting at 5 o'clock. A couple of baseball games starting at 5. Canfield hosting Warren Harding. McDonald will be hosting Springfield. Uh, you got a baseball and a softball game at the South Range Complex on 46, uh, right, next to the, uh, right next to the K-12 through building. 
Uh, South Range girls will be playing Poland in softball. The South Range boys will be playing Poland in baseball. Uh, both of those games will be held at the uh, complex on State Route 46 uh, in the uh, South Range School District. Uh, also, uh, Struthers will be hosting Jefferson at 5 o'clock today in baseball. And tonight at 7 o'clock, Austin Town Fitch will be hosting Mc. I'm sorry, they'll be hosting Howland at uh, 7 o'clock. Almost said McDonald. No, 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 no. Uh, Fitch will be hosting Howland tonight at 7 o'clock in high school baseball. And, of course, uh, the lights. Um, you got the... Uh, you got the uh, beautiful lights at Austin Town Fitch High School, hence the reason why they're playing a night game at Fitch High School. So uh, there you go. All right, 330-886-0813, the MP Vivo Heating and Air Conditioning Hotline open for business. We are awaiting the uh, head basketball coach uh, or the presumed head basketball coach of the – uh, Poland Bulldogs uh, board pending as the board will meet on April the 26th to approve uh, the uh, selection of Eric Fender to be the new boys basketball coach at Poland High School. And again, I don't think much is going to change. I mean, one would think uh, not much is going to change. Uh, Eric Fender, the longtime assistant uh, to Ken Grisdale, uh, I mean, we'll find out when we uh, get a hold of uh, Coach Fender and and talk a little bit about uh, the uh, the Poland uh, basketball job and and uh, how much things are going to change. One would assume uh, they won't change very much. I mean, you don't uh, you, you certainly don't want to get away when you're uh, very successful. And the Poland uh, basketball program has been very very successful. So. I'll be curious to see if there are changes, subtle changes or, or whatnot, uh, with Eric Fender taking over as the new boys basketball um, coach at Poland High School. All right, we'll take a timeout. We'll hear from Eric Fender coming up in a bit. Stick around, more to come. Your first and last stop with your tax return should be with me, Tracy Bryden at Greenwood Chevrolet in Austintown. No other dealer sells more cars finances more and gets you more for your refund than Greenwood Chevrolet in Austintown. WRS Wealth Advisors is the area's premier wealth and retirement specialist. With our combined 70 years experience and comprehensive wealth strategy, we assist our clients attain their goals. Call 330-965-0370 to learn more about our individual and corporate financial planning services or visit wrswealthadvisors.com. Good luck, athletes. Hi everyone, this is DJ Yokely with Your Sports Network. We appreciate your support of YSN and welcome you to the YSN family. Our broadcast streams are brought to you live at no cost to you by sponsors that are local to this community. Without the vision and generosity of our sponsors and partners, we would not be able to bring this game to you today. So please support the great businesses and leaders that are making this game possible. And if you're a business in need of great advertising and sponsorship opportunities, feel free to head over to our site for more information on the right fit for you. We are local, we are loyal, and we are live. We are YSN. Ah, the details. Baird Brothers Fine Hardwoods is one fine ride. Perfect cornering, superb handling, sporty and stylish, power to spare, plus awesome mileage. Yeah, jaw-droppingly beautiful lines and well-appointed with luxurious trim. Put more oomph in your life and start beholding the molding. Find your home's fine hardwood at BairdBrothers.com. For heating, cooling, and indoor air quality, the Mahoney Valley trusts MP Vivo Heating and Air Conditioning, offering worry-free repair, service, and installation. Call MP Vivo today for a free estimate. MP Vivo Heating and Air Conditioning. We're your energy-efficient experts. 
Planning a project around your home or rental property? Trust the electrical service to the local experts with 62 years of serving the Mahoning Valley. Joe Dickey Electric is your local go-to source for responsive, reliable residential electrical work. From everyday maintenance and repairs to new installations, electrical upgrades, and safety inspections, no job is too big or too small. Call Joe Dickey Electric today, 800-549-3976, or visit DickeyElectric.com. That's DickeyElectric.com. Welcome back to a Tuesday edition of Running Point presented by Greenwood Chevrolet on Mahoning Avenue in Austin Town. If you're in the market for a brand new or slightly used automobile, do yourself a favor and check out the good folks at Greenwood Chevrolet on Mahoning Avenue in Austin Town. They have a great sales department, fantastic service department, and a wonderful um, finance department as well. Add it all up, and uh, it in it, there's no other place to go uh, if you're looking for a brand new or slightly used automobile. Before you put pen to paper, uh, do yourself a favor and give the good folks at Greenwood Chevrolet on Mahoning Avenue in Austin Town an opportunity to earn your business. I mean, after all, if you put pen to paper on a car, chances are you're signing six to seven years of your life away in terms of, uh, you know, a monthly payment. And you want to be able to get the lowest monthly payment as possible while still getting a really, really good automobile. So hence the reason uh, to scoot over to Greenwood Chevrolet on Mahoning Avenue in Austin Town. 330-886-0813, the MP Vivo heating and air conditioning hotline open for business. Waiting on uh, the head basketball coach in, in waiting uh, from the Poland Bulldogs, Eric Fender. He is expected to take over the program. As a matter of fact, he's been, he, he has been, um, Given the job, uh, board approval pending. Uh, the board will meet on uh, April the 26th. That's two weeks from yesterday. And barring any unforeseen uh, circumstances, uh, the board will approve the hiring of Eric Fender to be the new head basketball coach for the Poland uh, Bulldogs uh, a boys basketball team. And um, again, considering the fact that uh, the Bulldogs have had tremendous, tremendous success uh, for the last 20-some-odd years. They've, they've been uh, one of the fixtures and one of the consistent programs in our area. One would think uh, there will not be very much uh, in terms of change uh, with, this, uh, with this basketball team. Uh, from the way things are done to uh, you know trying to uh, get as much talent from the uh, from the village of Poland as possible and look I've been saying this for years whoever the head basketball coach is it's not just high school that you're looking at uh, it, the reality is if you want a program and we're not talking about uh, a fly by night every now and then. Uh, you'll hit pay dirt and have a real nice uh, year. And uh, and then other years, it'll be uh, struggling to win five or six games. If you want a consistent program, it starts as, as soon as the kids start going to school. And that's kindergarten. Uh, to uh, try to get as many of those kids immersed into the game of basketball as humanly possible from kindergarten all the way uh, to fifth and sixth grade. And, and that's going to be the, uh, the job of the brand new uh, head basketball coach at Poland High School. And he joins us, uh, joins me, I should say, on the MP Vivo heating and air conditioning hotline. Eric Fender, coach, congratulations to you. Thank you very much. How are you today? I'm doing well. Now, I, I'm assuming that uh, the board's going to say, yeah, Eric Fender, come on down. You're the next contestant on who wants to be the head basketball coach at Poland High School. Uh, I got to assume they're going to say yes to you, Coach. Uh, that's my hope. 
uh, after talking with Mr. Banfield and the administration, uh, I know that's the route that they decided to go. Uh, and I can't say that um, you know, I'm extremely excited about the opportunity, and I hope at the board meeting everything turns out the way uh, they want it to. You've been uh, the assistant of Ken Grisdales for some time now, and, and I made mention before you came on board to uh, to talk with me that I, I would assume that not much would change. I mean, after all, uh, you guys have been one of, if not the most consistent basketball program in the last 20 years in the Mahoning Valley. You don't really need to change all that much when things work so well. No, you're right. And, and even when, uh, you know, we're talking with Coach Grisdale, the one thing that, that I've always said is, is he did such a great job of laying the foundation. Uh, he did such a great job of, of getting everything to where it is nowadays. Uh, and my job now is to just keep the train rolling. Um, you know, there's some tweaks that I'm going to probably bring in that might be a little bit different compared to him. Uh, but when it's not broke, you don't fix it. And I don't plan on changing a whole heck of a lot. Um, like I said, the philosophy might be a little bit different. Um, but in general, you know, we're going to try and just keep the, keep the train rolling. When you have a successful program year in and year out, uh, boy, kids at an early age get real immersed into playing basketball at, at a very, very early age. And, th- and that, just is, that just does a program so much, uh, so much good when you see kids in kindergarten, first and second grade picking up a basketball and, and trying to learn how to play the game. Uh, for a school like Poland and, and any school in the Mahoning Valley, but especially here at Poland, uh, that's just that's just great for the program. Yeah, you know, winning helps uh, so much. And over the course of Coach Grisdale's time, uh, you know, to win 500 games and to build uh, that interest at such a, a young age and a, a young level uh, is definitely key. You know, it's the foundation is those younger levels. Uh, and what they learn there, the fundamentals that they learn there, which I hope to continue, uh, only builds for a bigger and bigger, bigger and better program as you get into that JV varsity level. Eric Fender, the n- new boys basketball coach at Poland High School, joining me on the MPV Vo Heating and Air Conditioning Hotline. I'm not familiar with with how you guys uh, did things when Coach Grisdale was around in in terms of how you guys handled your junior high program. Uh, are the junior high kids going to be playing the same style of offense? You will have your varsity team play, and, and then it's just the concept of these kids learning uh, learning what I'm going to be uh, teaching them in high school two years early? Yeah, you know, anything for me for a basketball program or any uh, sport that you're playing, the fundamentals are the key. Uh, and I think Coach Grisdale did a nice job. And, again, like I said, there's not much I'd like to change in that aspect. Uh, but it's getting the fundamentals built at, from the ground up. And the ground is your four, five, and six programs. Your, your ground is your middle school, seventh, and eighth programs. And each year they go up, a little bit more is added to them, whether it's offensively, whether it's defensively, whether it's skill development, things like that. You want to try and increase so by the time they get to be a junior and senior, you know, there's not much that you really have to implement except for maybe some sets, some different defensive stuff, uh, things like that, but definitely the foundations at the lower levels. Eric Fender, he is the new boys uh, basketball coach at Poland, uh, board uh, approval pending. Uh, he joins me on the MP Vivo heating and air conditioning hotline. Uh, and obviously, the, you keep the train rolling, as you said. Let's talk a little bit about what you have returning for the 2021-2022 campaign. How much talent do you lose and how much talent is coming back next year, Coach? Well, you, you lose a lot of talent. You lose a, a, an all-league player in Andrew Senefani. Uh, and Brody Todd, as well as uh, some other seniors uh, that are graduating this year. We're returning four uh, key juniors in Christian Colosimo, Jack Fulton, Ross Dito, and Michael Gordon. And then we've got a lot of lower-level guys. Uh, Carson Maurer, Bryce Berenger, uh, Luke Generalovic, uh, all have gotten varsity experience this year. And one who hopefully comes back from 
uh, injury this past year is J.P. Genova. Um, but I'm really excited with uh, the kids that are coming up, the kids that are coming back. Uh, I got to work a lot with the freshman group last fall, uh, and I'm really excited to, to see them grow and develop. So I think we've got a lot of talent coming back. Coach, we're still in the, at least in the tail end of the COVID world. Hopefully by the start of the basketball season, uh, we won't have to deal with it anymore. But the reality is we still do have COVID. How does that uh, change things in terms of what you would like to accomplish uh, during the open gym portion of the off season? You know, right now, I don't think it's going to change a whole heck of a lot. Uh, we're going to get in the gym a few nights a week, uh, work on skill development, work on uh, shooting, dribbling, ball handling, uh, get them to play some. Um, so in that sense, I don't think it's going to really affect us. We're just going to continue following the protocols that are put in place for us um, and treating it as such. I think the interesting part for us will be the summertime. Uh, will we be able to go to summer leagues? Will we be able to do uh, different summer shootouts? Uh, and how our administration is going to handle that type of situation, um, you know, with what we're allowed to do? Because, like you said, COVID is still around, uh, hopefully not for much longer. But, unfortunately, it's still something we have to deal with. Um, and we've got some time to sort of figure things out. Coach, when we start talking about the building the the program for next year, Open Gym is such an important part. And, you know, I, I try to tell as many schools as possible, the attendance in Open Gym, well, now you, you can't sit here and say you have to show up because it's not basketball season technically, but you can make it known to the players, um, you're going to be behind the eight ball if you don't show up. I'm curious how how well is Open Gym uh, attended by your uh, basketball program, Coach? Well, for me, any Open Gym in the spring is for non-spring sport athletes. Um, they're for the guys who maybe just play football and basketball and they're off in the spring. Uh, it's just an opportunity to come in and get a workout in, get some shots up, uh, do that skill development that we talked about. So, you know, there's, I'm a big proponent for going and playing as many sports as possible. So for those spring sports guys, I highly encourage go run track, go play baseball, go do lacrosse, because anytime you can get into that competition, I think that really helps, you know, as you grow as an athlete. Um, you know, now in the summer, it'll be a little bit more demanding. You know, we'll have a little bit more higher expectations uh, just because, you know, we don't get as much time uh, once football season starts. But uh, it, it's very important in the skill development side of things to, to get kids to work on not only their game now, but to try and find ways to get better. You know, I'm, I'm glad that you brought up the fact of uh, you're a proponent to uh, kids playing multiple sports. And, and let's be honest, I mean, football is, uh, is one of the king sports uh, in this area. And I'm sure that you have a lot of kids that are going to be playing football in the fall that will also be playing basketball in, in the wintertime. And uh, it, it's it's really nice when you hear the basketball coaches sit back and say, look, August 1st, put the basketball away. Your concentration should be on football. The moment your football season comes to an end, you give us the common courtesy. You put your football stuff away. Now you're ready to play some basketball, get into the gym, get ready for the season. Correct. And coming from a smaller school such as Springfield, now going to Poland, you know, I think it transitions very well because you need to be able to share athletes. You know, as schools are getting smaller, uh, so are the athletic numbers. And to be able to share those good athletes uh, can only help uh, in general. And then in the same sense, too, I just love the competition side of things to where there's things that kids can take from a football game and being, you know, right into the thick of things. I know Poland a few years ago had a state championship run and get that to turn over to okay, maybe now they're in a pressure situation in a basketball game, and they're not as tense. They're a little bit more relaxed, and they, they're almost like we've been here before. It's sort of natural for them. Coach, you made mention you, you grew up in an environment of a small school in Springfield. Uh, I, I know that you also uh, had a lot of success over at Springfield as well. Did you take anything away from the experience 
uh, as as an athlete and, and as uh, someone that was around the Springfield basketball program. Did you have you taken anything away from that experience that you'll incorporate uh, at Poland? I think the one thing that you. I took away from my time at Springfield and I learned this again with coach Grisdale at Poland was you have to be adaptable to any situation. Um, Every year you're going to get a new group of kids coming in. Uh, You're going to have some kids who might like basketball more than they like other sports and vice versa. Um, And, you know, somebody goes, somebody asked me the other day, well, what's your coaching style? my coaching style is going to be based on the kind of athletes and kind of players I have coming back. And that's ever changing. And I think Springfield taught me that there were years where we had pure athletes. And then there were some years where we had good football players, but if we can get kids to work hard and commit during the time that I have them, I think we can do some really nice things. Well, coach, uh, again, uh, with the uh, board approval on April the 26th, you take over for Ken Grisdale and, uh, you go into the uh, uh, to a great conference in the Northeast State, some great competition as well. Uh, it doesn't mean you can't uh, schedule some some tough non conference games, but uh, you're you're definitely going to be in an interesting conference with a lot of competition for sure. The Northeast State Conference is is a great conference. You know, you've had Strellers, who's been very good in the past few years in basketball. Lakeview had a great run a few years ago and is well coached by by Ryan Fitch. And you look at Gerard and South Range is starting to develop. And I know South Range lost Coach Cullen this past year. Um, you know, so it'll be interesting to see how things work out there. But overall, I don't think you can ask for a much better conference than the Northeast State Conference. Um, and as for the schedule, the schedule this year for the most part was laid out for us. Uh, we did pick up Cheney, uh, a team that you know we ran into uh, in the district finals this past year, and it's a team that we know will challenge us consistently in the district tournament. So we wanted to try and up our schedule a little bit, and uh, we'll see how things go this year and see if there's any tweaks or changes in the future that we can make as well to try and play a more challenging schedule and get these kids ready for not only conference play but tournament time also. Well, you know, 22 game season schedule, and hopefully that's what we're going to have. As we mentioned, hopefully uh, COVID is kicked to the curb, uh, and when it is, uh, if it is, you get a, a full gymnasium, uh, something that we have not seen in a couple of years. Uh, I know one thing uh, in my experiences at Poland, that place gets really, really loud when uh, when there's excitement in the air. Oh, there's no doubt about it, and I can't tell you the amount of memories that I have from my playing time uh, back in the early 2000s for Coach Grisdale and some of the the games and the crowds that we had at the field house, and then coming back and being able to coach with him. Uh, I coached one year with him when um, before I went out to Springfield and got a teaching job out there. Uh, You know, just a, a packed house, and the Poland community is such a great community in sport in supporting any athletic program Uh, and like I said before winning helps that and when you win you draw that interest of people coming out to to see you and to support you so yeah it's an exciting time for us right now coach are you guys going to play Springfield I'm I'm curious uh, in in a (laughs) non-conference setting they are on the schedule this year yes that's outstanding Uh, congratulations on that and uh, we will certainly uh, we will certainly look forward to a new era uh, of basketball coming up later this year and uh I, I mean i'm excited for it but uh, let's not get too excited because we still have summer and and i love me uh, i love me some summer but uh yeah definitely looking forward to uh, some good basketball uh and i'm looking forward to seeing what you can do at poland high school and congratulations and uh best of luck to you this year i know that this is uh this is going to be a fun fun time for you coach well, thank you very much. I appreciate you having me on, and, and it's definitely an exciting time, and, and we hope to uh, continue everything that was sort of built uh, by Coach Grisdale, and, and we hope that we can do him proud uh, and by the way we go about things. So well, I appreciate it. I'm sure you're definitely going to uh, take a, a gigantic step in the right direction and then some. Coach, all the best to you. Thank you so much. Have a great day. You as well, sir. There he is, the new head basketball coach, 
Uh, the pending board approval on April the 26th, Eric Fender is going to be the new head basketball coach at Poland High School. Uh, and it's good to see that he's going to have Springfield on the schedule. Uh, he, he was over at Springfield and then uh, uh, became an assistant coach with uh, Coach Grisdale and now takes over the Poland boys basketball uh, uh, job uh, with the retirement of Ken Grisdale. And speaking of retirement, he made mention John Cullen retired over at South Range. Uh, there's a, another position. We we talked about all kinds of different positions that are going to be open in the uh, in the high school uh, basketball side of things. Uh, man, there's uh, there's going to be some changes, and and certainly uh, be interested to see how all of this shakes out. But uh, I'm I'm sure that Coach Fender is going to continue the tradition of greatness at Poland High School. This is just a fabulous, fabulous program. All right, that'll do it for the show today. Many, many thanks to uh, Rob Schmidt, uh, Dan Bertolini, and Eric Fender for calling in. Uh, We will do this tomorrow. Anthony will be in studio. We'll have some fun. Uh, Tomorrow, Brian Tolnar will be our guest. Uh, We will preview uh, the upcoming PGA stop uh, this coming weekend, I believe uh, they are in South Carolina at the RBC Heritage uh, at Hilton Head this weekend. Uh, so that should be a fun time as we will preview uh, that uh, weekend on the PGA Tour and so much more tomorrow when Brian calls in at 1 o'clock. All right, Power Hour is coming up next. and Make it a great rest of the day, everyone. We will talk tomorrow from noon to 3 on YSN Live.